live from the red carpet. The moment you've all been waiting for. You what? No, 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 no. Well, that hit the spot. Hey guys, and welcome to the final Gosscast of 2021. Can't believe we got to the end of the year. Woo! What's <laughs> happening? Um, so it's myself again, Alexandra Ryan and Kendra Becker. And just a huge thank you to this season's sponsors, Greenheart CBD an amazing CBD Irish owned company just make sure to go on to greenheartcbd.ie to check out all their latest offers everyone is shouting from the rooftops about this brand it's so good it can really help with issues it is a food supplement but a lot of people do use it to help with issues like anxiety and depression so it is it is really really kind of alternative way to to help yourself with those issues so just again greenheartcbd.ie and make sure to check out their Instagram as well so So many things have happened this year and we want to cheers to this year. Yeah. Like there's been many up and downs. There's been a bottle of Moe coming. Probably more downs than ups. (laughs) Probably more downs than ups. Like can you, I think we need a drink just for getting to the date. I know. Like we got to the end of the year. I love how people keep being like, I want, I don't want to see any predictions for 2022 because like, we just don't know what's gonna happen. It's like, how dare you shut your mouth? Yeah, like, people like, I know it's gonna be my year, and it's no. like, you know what? Shh. Like, let's it's no one's wait. year. <laughs> it's funny because 2020, 2020 was like the worst year. We can all agree. Because yeah. even like recently, a few people like there's been a lot of bad days recently. Can I just also explain how good I am at this? Now I used to literally I'm be like a bar manager when I was 15. Oh, <laughs> that's highly illegal. Listen to this, baby. <laughs> oh my god! It doesn't even pop off. Like. <laughs> You're I'm available for weddings and no, I'm not. <laughs> yeah. But gonna pop that. Sorry for anyone well, listening you never know, and not you watching. A, I'm popping a, a bottle. Mixer. Little maybe we can we can have a goss events company. Yeah. You to, will you tilt it now? Oh Jesus! You should tilt it to get all the the most liquid ever. Oh my God. Um. Yum. But yeah. So 2020 was such a bad year, and someone the other day was having a really bad day, and I was like, remember 2020 though? I'll just fill it up because like that <laughs> year it was like there was no vaccine. People literally weren't seeing their family. Like it was a whole other level. So I feel like even though we both have had a rough couple of weeks, even though it's bad. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, let's do a little cheers yeah. to, to cheers 2021 to... being over. I know. <laughs> being over. I I'm know. ready for next year. Yeah. Definitely ready for next year. Mm. Oh, wow. wow. <laughs> Already <laughs> spilled a bit. Do we destroying have, your notes. Do we have any napkins? Do we have napkins in the house? We don't. Oh, no, there's tissue actually. Oh, when you grabbed me a little bit of tissue, sorry, uh, that I brought myself. It's like I knew, I knew that this was going to happen. Um, but yeah, um, even though there is ups and downs, and I know not everyone's probably having the best Christmas this year, it's just a really tough time. We are here to entertain here. for the last couple of days of yeah. 2021. And we're going to basically talk through the biggest stories of 2021. And it's hard. it was hard this year to actually cut them down because there's there was so, so many. Now, let's just see the order. I might mix around the order a little bit, just in terms of what I think were the biggest ones. It's so funny, though, because, like, anytime I tell anyone that I'm, like, uh, I work in entertainment, I'm an entertainment news journalist, they'd be like, God, there mustn't have been anything happening this year. I'm like, loads. You're like, you do my job for a day, look. Yeah. I know, people, and as well, for years, we were the only site in Ireland that used to work on Christmas Day, because I used to do it every year. And I remember being like, why? Like, things were happening. People were getting pregnant. There was engagements. People always die as well people always Which die is really like sad. i remember it was a steven's <laughs> day i was like you know i might actually chill out and not work today and then it was like breaking news george michael has i was like yeah. oh everyone dies at christmas everyone so, dies. how dare they um, <laughs> how dare they dare pass they? away at this but time but can i just say like christmas can be tough for the singletons out there oh so my God. this cheers this, to that this cheers, cheers <laughs> to the single gals because like everyone is like oh my god the easiest yes i've ever said we get it like we get yeah. it the hashtag I understand. boy done good i'm like boy done shut up <laughs> shut up i dare you like can like Hate female it, people like, mute those posts although yeah. we need them for the site but like wow. I feel like every year my entire timeline is flooded with engagements and weddings and babies so I'm like well look everyone knows is engaged now and then still yet again another still. Christmas comes there's They'll more come out of the woodwork I'm like do, yeah. I, do I even follow her like why am <laughs> yeah. I seeing that post the Instagram algorithm is just basically fucking yeah, you yeah I off, know like. <laughs> single in your area you know like those ads yeah. how dare you um, so okay mean. do you know what I want to start off with is some very good news we had this year and I think it was a really welcome bit of news because we didn't know it was coming and we had had the shittest year in 2020 the Mm -hmm. friends reunion 
Yes. It was just like, I feel like it was the first thing this year that everyone started to get really excited about because that was early in the year when that announcement came out that they were reuniting. Nobody knew how the reunion was going to go down. Originally, it was meant to happen in 2020, but yeah. everything COVID ruined it. Yeah. Um, but no one knew what was happening. And I remember there was kind of confusion around. I was even a bit annoyed. I was like, oh, they're not going to be in their characters. It's just going to be themselves. I bawled my it was eyes so out. Good. It was so well done from just the second, you know, that first scene where they're just walking into the studio. Mm. I was already crying. Yeah. Like nothing was even said. And I was just like, oh my God, like I'm such a Friends fan. Mm. And especially during lockdown, like I think a lot of people have rewatched Friends during lockdown. Yeah. It's like your pals during the day, like especially when we were really, really in lockdown, you couldn't see anyone. I loved turning on Friends because it was mm. just easy watching, mm. really good crack. And when they like walked back into the set, I literally was so thinking emotional. of all these episodes, all these famous lines, all these famous quotes. I was just remembering everything. And so I feel like we needed that. Yeah, I feel like it was a piece of content a lot of people didn't even think that they needed. needed. Yeah. And then because was... like, I know loads of people that weren't even huge Friends fans, but yeah. they watched it growing up here and there. And they were like, oh my God, that was actually one of the best things I've ever watched. Ever. <laughs> because so I good. was like, a reunion would mean they all come back together like Sex and the City, which we talked about in the last, or two episodes ago. Um, but with this, so with this, I was a bit, and also James Corden, like, mm. was presenting it there. I, the poor guy, like, if he walks down the street, people are signing petitions. Yeah, people are like, a oh, classic like, James Corden. Yeah, walking He's down like, the street, how dare he? But there he was, is there annoying. Was, I know, but there was, a, there was a bit of like, oh, about that. But I got, I had some really big takeaways from the friends unions. The first one and the most important one was the revelation that Jennifer Aniston and David Schwimmer both were into each other, but they were both in relationships. Yeah. I never saw that coming. I'm sorry. Like, and I'm a stan of friends. I never once watched them and thought that's the real deal. They're yeah. just good actors. But to see them talking about the story and then remember they shared the behind the scenes clips and they were both like hugging each other on the sofa. And I was like, like, oh, I was like, what? Yeah. And wasn't he going out with like Natalie and Brulier at the time or some fa- yeah. famous? Yeah, and then she was with Brad Pitt. Natalie was. No, um, sorry, Jennifer was with Brad Pitt. Not in those early years when she was talking about she was with someone else. Oh. She was actually dating, it's another famous actor and I can't think of his name. She was dating someone else at that time. So they were talking about the kind of first four seasons. Yeah. So she wasn't with Brad then. She was with Brad after that. Yeah. But like, I think everyone on this earth wants Jennifer Aniston to find love. So yeah. when that revelation came out, I was like, marry David. Yeah. Like Ross and so Rachel cute. together in real life. And the way they were talking about it, the way they were just like, it didn't even seem like the partners were the problem. Mm. They were more like, we were on this big show and we didn't want to complicate things. And yeah. even the fact that the other actors were like, I knew. I was like, how did that secret never come out? I don't know. Sure, like people, people obviously noticed. wanted to jump on the bandwagon. So like not long after the reunion, all these reports started coming out that Jennifer Aniston and David Schwimmer were hanging out and stuff. And he was like dating someone. Uh, else. Yeah. Like, and like there me. was, and like loads of people believed it and got really excited about it. And then David Schwimmer's he rep, rep basically was just like, no. The thing is though, I feel like if they ever did get it on, I mean, maybe, because wasn't there kind of a moment where they were like, it never happened and, uh, Matt LeBlanc was like he was like mm, sure so like I'd say the, there was a few rap parties a few, where like, they were like hanky panky under yeah. the sheets yeah a few <gasps> riding going on in mm. set but like I don't know I feel like if something happened we probably wouldn't know about it I mean of all the yeah. people in the world I'd say Jennifer Aniston does not want to tell a soul if she even fancies someone anymore because like it's yeah. the front page of the National Enquirer that she's pregnant if she yeah. even looks at a man yeah should we said that on the podcast yeah. the other day, this, she's like, been pregnant like 17, 17 times. times like but I just leave her alone. it made the episode even more emotional, like just knowing that they actually did really like each other. And I was mm. just like, is that a missed opportunity? Like all these years later watching them, like it was so sad. Mm. One of the other big takeaways as well was Matthew Perry. Like I I knew he had struggles during the series, like, you know, because he had issues yeah. with addiction and stuff like that. But when he was talking about the anxiety he used to have, like if a joke didn't land mm. and the audience didn't laugh, it made me feel yeah. so bad for him. I forgot that they actually filmed it in front of a live, live audience. audience. No, they didn't do that all the time, but they did Most it a lot. episodes, yeah. yeah. And the last season, I think all of them, they did them live because it was like the 
end but like that's the funny thing about sitcoms they're almost like doing plays mm, like yeah. they use a lot of um, production companies would use the audience to feel out jokes like they might cut jokes if people don't laugh yeah like so it's just interesting because obviously you watch it and you're like they're all so confident they're so amazing and he was literally like having panic attacks yeah. being like I have to be the funny one I have to make everyone laugh and it was kind of sad to see that like it affected him so much yeah and I, I think like it really shows their skills as actors as well that they were able to do that in front of an audience it's and the difference it, between yeah. like presenters who do live tv and presenters Such who do pre-recorded field. stuff as well it's like a yeah. huge difference in like skill and then also poor Matt LeBlanc like he went viral <laughs> for the way he sat in that chair like a part of me thinks it's hilarious and I so saw a meme issue yesterday someone saying it because it's like an Irish lad in the pub going yeah yeah yeah, yeah, I, yeah. That. I remember that but then there was like a lot of people like slamming people for sharing the meme being like you're slagging him but I don't think it was yeah, meant and being like ageist and yeah. stuff but like no it's it was all way he was sat- it looked like he's made to fall asleep yeah like he was so chill he out. looks like one of those owl lads it's like are they rips in your jeans yeah or? I know like literally <laughs> so poor Matt um who what else did I take away from the show there was just it was just so was good just so and feel good good yeah and also obviously the character that played oh my god I'm going blank now <gasps> Gunther Gunther yeah, so remember he came he didn't come and it was the height yeah, he was of on Zoom. Uh, COVID because I remember they were outdoors and everyone was wearing masks as well mm. like is in, in America the mask ban hadn't been lifted or anything and uh, he was on Zoom and then we knew he was sick then though right yeah 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 and I don't think they said what was wrong with him but he died like shortly enough after that yeah. maybe like two months later or mm. something he died really that sad. was so sad but it was nice because I love the story about how Gunther's character stayed because he was never meant to be in the series that long he was brought on as like the random you know guy that fancies Rachel but he yeah. was there to the very last episode I know. and he played such a major role in their relationship like he's the one who told Rachel that Ross had slept with someone oh my god yeah on their break yeah like it's just such a weird story how he was basically a uh, featured extra and then he became then he a just, pivotal role yeah. like he just stayed there like part of the and furniture. remember like the one the last episodes when she before she moved to Paris Ross is like I'm gonna tell her I love her blah blah and Gunther's mm. like Rachel I need to talk to you and he like he, he says he's in love with her and then Ross is like, for fuck. <laughs> it's like why but it's such a fun like if, if anyone's having a bad day watching Friends again you'll just so good. Ross is my favourite character I have to say yeah like and the I funniest kind of, thing he's like the Phil of Modern Family of the Friends he's yeah. the silly character but I kind of forgot that I loved him so much and then watching the reunion and then like they obviously played a lot of like old clips back Pivot. and I was like Pivot. Ross was actually the funniest so funny person on that show one of my favorite scenes in any of the episodes is the episode where Rachel is trying to tell Ross that her and Joey are seeing each other and he's like opening his bag from remember they'd been in the Bahamas yeah yeah like that. and uh, she's like I want to talk to him he's like yeah no problem and he's like oh my god like something broke in my bag like this shampoo and she's like oh right and then he starts opening he's like oh my god it's everywhere he's like why why do bad things happen to good people why and then she's like maybe I should come back later <laughs> like it's just so that's just literally bad. me every day I know but like the comedic <laughs> timing of that show oh, so is just good. ridiculous like you literally would still, die laughing like it still lands to this day. It still lands. Yeah. It's like what you're saying about Sex and City of the Week. It's like you could watch it in any time. Now, there are definitely a few tasteless yeah. jokes now. But like the jokes, they last forever. The relationships, the way mm. they date, the rent control apartment doesn't get <laughs> yeah. Like there's a lot so of important. things. And then for me, the most like like emotional episode is the very last one. Because the other way it's like in front of the live audience and you can see they're really crying. Yeah. And they're just like putting all the keys down for the apartment. I was like, I'm not ready for this. Like, I don't do well with ending of shows. Like, Shit's Creek, when that ended, I was not okay about that. Not okay. Like, I get it. And I know we were talking about Succession the other day too. I think that needs to end in season four. Like, because yeah. I think you have to go out in a high. Mm. You don't want it to get to a point where it's going on too long. But Friends is one of these weird ones that it went on for so long and it never got bad it mm. never got boring no yeah. one was ever like mm, that season wasn't and they great. could have kept going they really could have why why not and like it's mad to think that they did 10 seasons like oh my god 10 seasons so many it has to be one of the longest running sitcoms in the world yeah 
probably and like it's still like how much money do you think that they make oh my from God, that show every year still alone. I'd say they all make millions a yeah. year millions from something they did so long ago and I love all the kind of uh, they talked about it on their union but I always love the stories of how people got on the show and like they were talking about Jennifer Aniston she was a waitress on a different show and they were just like oh like you know because you never know she it. was told she would never make it never make it and for anyone who knows like what pilot season's like pilot season every single show you're told is going to be the one like this mm. is going to get greenlit and yeah. actors always have to make a decision because in a pilot season you could be cast in five different shows and then let's say two of them get greenlit you have to choose which one so it's mad when you think about it like I'd love to know the people who like nearly went for a show and then they're like I'm gonna go for another one and then just like never made it but like um you know the way Matt Damon has said that he turned down Avatar Oh god! And like that movie is like the highest grossest oh my, grossing, grossing movie, movie ever. I'm trying to think to know any other. And he's like, I turned. massively regret that now. Oh my god! <laughs> Although he got the Bourne ultimatum, the whole series. Yeah, yeah, but he's still. grand. Avatar. And then it went to Sam Worthington, which is so random. So random. Where mm. is he at? Like, I haven't I seen know. him since. No, but that was a really good start to the year. I felt. I know. I just felt. That, I don't know. I just felt like things were getting back to normal as well because there was like an audience. It was back in real life. There was still a few Zoom elements, but I felt it was like a little bit back to normal. Yeah. One of the things we obviously have to talk about this year, there's so many stories about them, but Prince Harry and Meghan Markle. Where yeah. do we begin? Where do we begin? Like, so the- I think we have to begin Oprah. with Oprah. That was like were you March. Silent? No, <laughs> were you silent? Were you silent or were you silenced? silenced? <laughs> now, she better ask that question again. I saw, remember I said this to you before, that there was rumours that her and Brittany are doing like a big mm. interview. And uh, Andy Cohen like commented underneath the story being like to Oprah, you need was to she, ask her, was she silent or was she... Like obviously Brittany was silenced. Like there's, there's <laughs> yeah, no well, question about that. Clearly. But I remember the hype and the absolute drama around when we found out that this interview was actually yeah. happening and the o- the only trailer that went around for like a week was Oprah going were you silent yeah you- and then Megan's just like and she's like and it's so dramatic and I have so many thoughts about the interview so remember I was one of the only people in literally Ireland who stayed up to watch <laughs> yeah. it because it, it was, was like, like 5 a.m. or something and I was really like interested to how it was gonna go I just read Finding Freedom and I just, I really wanted them to come across really authentic in the interview because I want to be team Harry and Meghan. Like, mm. I do. But I, I watched it and I don't know. I felt that Meghan was insincere in some parts. In some parts, I was, like, shocked. Like, when she said she, you know, had wanted to take her own life. Like, obviously, I believed that. Like, I believed yeah. a lot of what she said. But the fact that the whole issue about the claims against her for bullying staff, why didn't Oprah ask the question? Mm. And I think this was a lot of the criticism at the time. Because when they start the episode, Oprah's like, we haven't agreed to what we're talking about. And she's like, no. Yet she left out Prince Andrew, the biggest scandal the royals have had in their yeah. lifetime, yeah. being linked to a convicted mm. paedophile. Yeah. That's not mentioned. Then there's so many claims that she you know, was accused of bullying staff. I'm not saying she did, but if you're going to do Oprah, surely that's going to come up in conversation. So that kind of irritated me. And then the whole situation about Kate Middleton, when she said, you know, it happened the other way around, that Kate made her cry. Yeah. Felt like that was a little stab in the back to Kate. Yeah. Yeah. And I get it. Megan wants her public persona to be like, fixed I understand that but like did she need to throw someone else under the bus I don't mm. know so there was a few parts of the interview I was let down but obviously the biggest shock was when she said a senior royal member questioned the colour of their child's skin yeah so she basically said that there was concerns and conversations about what Archie's skin colour was going to be when yeah. um, that they found out that she was pregnant and, Oprah and was I like, think <gasps> it, it like obviously they didn't name who it was which made it even worse because worse. there's so many senior royals that it could have been right after Prince Harry was like it's not my grandfather or my grandmother yeah again kind of making it worse because like yeah. right well it's not them there's literally only two other people that are you know that you would think yeah could have said that but like they both made a number of very shocking claims in the interview like Harry said shocking. that the family had cut him off financially yeah that like if he didn't have the money that his uh Security. late mom Diana had oh, left sorry, yeah, him yeah. he would literally like not be now I have conflicting Security. feelings about all this I remember me and you talked about it you were like so team Harry and Meghan the thing is some of the claims they made right so they talked about Archie not being given a title that's completely normal for his mm. lineage. He's not in line for the crown. Yeah. So Eugenie's child 
also doesn't have a title. So like they said a few things to make it seem shocking, but that's actually how it works. They haven't decided to not give Archie a title. That's not how yeah. it works. That is literally the way I think there's the royal something family works. that like once Prince Charles takes the throne, he can change. Then he can something change it. That yeah. he, he will. But as of right now, it's completely no, like it's historical that he doesn't get it. So yeah. it annoyed me that they said that because in America, I don't think people would understand that. Mm-hmm. The other thing then about cutting him off, I know that seems shocking, but he's no longer a working mm. royal. So yeah. why would they pay for his? If you're not going around doing the engagements, exactly. you're not getting the security. So this is what I was just a bit annoyed about. Like I felt for them. I got what they were saying, but at the same time, I felt they were so out to just destroy mm. basically his dad is how I felt Prince Charles yeah. like they were very much like you know the queen mother is amazing to get the brunt of it and then he said he wasn't taking his calls yeah. anymore like there was Sad. and I do whatever happened in the background I do feel really bad for Prince Charles like you've watched The Crown have you? yeah when you see how he was brought up and like how difficult it was not that it's a documentary but you know what I mean it's very similar to like they <laughs> yeah. say that that's what You're happened like, you know you know like the way he was like forced to go to that school like I, that's really well documented that he had a really terrible time in school and mm-hmm. he's had all these horrible things for your son to then come out and basically air all of your dirty laundry like I would be heartbroken if mm-hmm. I was Prince Charles like he basically has him in the little box of accusers of someone who questioned maybe the ethnic, the like the color of their child's skin. Then he says he's cut him off. Then he says he's not speaking to him. Like it just, mm. I'm not saying those things didn't happen, but like, does the whole world need to know? I just felt it was a little vindictive. I'm no Piers Morgan now. I'm not going to slam them, but I just watching it made me feel uncomfortable. I felt bad for them, you know, especially when he said that you know she had these suicidal ideations. But then they said they couldn't help her in the firm. Yeah. Like, that's obviously terrible. Like, someone yeah. definitely should have been able to help her. But I know a lot of critics came out afterwards and they were like, but Prince Harry gets um, psychological help all the time. And they were like, why didn't she go to where he went? Like, there was just a lot of mm. unanswered questions. And what didn't help matters, remember, she had that other scene where she basically said that they got married by the Archbishop before yeah. the day. And, and then, then he had the to Archbishop remember, like, was like, no, that didn't, didn't happen. Because it's like against, not what's not the law, but like, but like you the know, religious law. Because on their marriage certificate, it said the actual date that they got married to Windsor Castle. Like you can't suddenly, you can't lie on that basically. Yeah, yeah. Basically. And then he was like, that didn't, I remember I was just like, that's so bad that they just flippantly were like, we were already married. And yeah. he was like, no, you weren't. Like, I didn't marry you. But you know what I think it is about the whole Charles thing? Obviously, like, there's so much that we don't know that goes on yeah. behind the scenes. But I think in recent years, a lot of stuff has come up to do with Diana. And mm. I think Harry is very bitter about what yeah, happened. Totally. Obviously, as he would be, like, you know. And Prince Charles did push her to the literal edge. Yeah, and yeah. I think it's because, like, it was the 20th anniversary of her death this year. Yeah, so there's I been know. a lot of documentaries out mm. about her. The Crown, it, like, yeah. that whole story. But then I find it very weird that Harry is prom- he's saying that he likes Netflix and he's like working with Netflix like everyone in the royal family has like condemned the crown and Harry never has remember he did that's what I'm saying like he obviously agrees with those versions of events events. yeah and like uh, him saying that he felt like history was repeating itself with Meghan Mm. he was scared that what was going to happen to them and I get that part you know we've discussed this before like obviously sometimes I don't know how authentic the two of them are but like the way she's been treated is obviously awful horrific I've never once been like she's grand like I do think she's Mm. had such a rough time but do I think the culprits are you know, the royal family. I don't know. Like, I think a lot of stuff that happened came from, like, social media in particular and then the media reflecting what was happening in social media. I do think that Megan maybe hoped that when she was, like, brought over, they would all just embrace her. And I think they didn't. And I think that's the way they are. They're cold. Mm. They're scared of letting people in. She was, like, this American actress. It's the royal family. They live in the past. But I think that's turned into now everyone thinking they're all racist. And I actually don't think Mm. in my... I obviously don't know, but in my personal opinion, I just think they maybe just didn't like her in general. Mm. Like, I don't know if it became about that. And she very much made it a race argument through the Oprah interview. So I think that just shocked a lot of people. And then... I think we should should talk about the fallout because that was kind of... this. Yeah, yeah. before we go into the big, big fallout, remember as well, Prince Philip was in hospital the day the Mm. episode got released. Yeah. And we were like, oh, like, obviously it's not going to go ahead. And it did. And it did. Mm. Didn't kill him then, like, but... But weeks later, he... Weeks later, he died. died. Yeah. 
No, the, the, so the backlash, talk me through it. So kind of, and it was very immediate, the backlash towards, uh, about the interview, because we yeah. were kind of like, because it's very unlike the royal family to release Talk about statements anything. about anything. Yeah. They mm. usually just kind of ignore and just let it no lie. No comment. Kind yeah. of thing. Or in Sandra. Yeah. <laughs> Woo. And I mean, it has to be said, it is appalling that Meghan has got more inches in a newspaper than Prince Andrew. Who yeah. Literally is wanted by the FBI. Yeah. 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 Um, but one of the first things that happened was Prince William and Kate were at an engagement. I think they were at our school or something. And as we know, royal reporters follow them everywhere yeah. for their um They're like a part of their daily life. Yeah. Yeah. And at one of them, someone just kind of shouted at William and was like, what do you think about the comments? And he like blankly said, he was like, we're not a racist family. And yeah. I thought that was so shocking because it's so unlike them to bluntly comment about something like that. But imagine like being accused of yeah, that. Yeah, so they obviously felt so strongly about it. Yeah. And then just days later, the Times published that piece basically <gasps> yes. saying that Megan was accused back in 2018 mm. of bullying staff at Ken- Kensington Palace. This was the second by, time a claim like that had come out as well. Yeah, yeah. and she was accused by their former communications secretary. So it was someone that obviously worked Jason. with them. Yeah, worked with Can them it- very closely. And uh, this all came out in the Times very conveniently a few days after their interview. Like, what, did, what did Jason accuse them of again? Um, saying that uh, she intimidated, I think, two members of staff or yeah, something like there that. Was a lot but of, like it was bullying claims. Yeah, there was a lot of claims and as well there was kind of like lower level staff mm. that she would like call them at all hours of the morning and stuff yeah. like that. And the thing, this is why I just don't know how I feel about them because... That's obviously terrible and I get it. If there's rumours about you in the press, maybe you want to hit back with your own. But remember, the pe- we'll talk about it now when we talk about the court case. But remember that big, was it People? I always forget which yeah, magazine. Yeah, People magazine. Where there was all these like off the record comments from mm-hmm. people close to Megan. They kept talking about her giving gloves to the guards at the gate. And it was like overly basically saying she was nice to all the staff. And this is what annoyed me about the Oprah interview because I'm not saying she's a bully or anything, but if I was in her position after saying, I wanted to kill myself, I had the worst time, my passport was taken off me, blah, blah, blah. Then I'd be like, look, maybe I had a short temper and maybe I didn't treat people the way. I mean, I don't mm-hmm. recall it that way, but maybe that's what happened. The fact that she never said anything is what yeah. gets me. Like if it was one person accusing of a grand, but like there's been... A lot of people that have come forward that have said mm. that something yeah, happened. Yeah, and I think I said this ages ago. Part of me wishes that she would just own it and exactly. own I'd the fact that she it. was a celebrity that came into the yeah. royal family and shook things up. Yeah, and be I, a boss bitch. Yeah, like I like. wish she would kind of just be like, yeah, I came in, and I yeah. stole Prince Harry. And like I didn't mean to be rude if I was, but like, and that yeah. was one of the interesting. Do you remember as well? One of the interesting things about the interviews was he said to Oprah, if it wasn't for Meghan, he never would have left. Mm. That she showed him how trapped he was. Mm. <laughs> it was such a dodgy sentence though, because it was just like she literally, obviously, was like Harry. Yeah. The royal family are literally looking at her like the devil. Yeah. Like, <laughs> but the UK press obviously did not handle the Oprah interview well at all no I mean and it's not surprising because no. like sure half it's their the, monarchy half, half the interview they talked about was how horrible the press were to them yeah and like <laughs> and not to bring worse. up the avocado piece again but it like so bad <laughs> causing third world wars yeah war crimes like in fairness they have been absolute. I just like, think they're destroyed. too bitter though it's like they hate all journalists remember they put up a statement before being like we want to help like homegrown grass, activists. They, they love the term grassroots. Grassroots as in <laughs> like companies who won't investigate them. Yeah. Like sometimes people need to be investigated. Mm. Like remember obviously he's all about like um you know keeping things green and saving you know the whole climate change thing and then someone wrote a report about all the private jets he showed. Mm. Like that to me like deserves an article. You can't yeah. be saying to everyone else you have to live green and then be like off on the jet like yeah. you know and him saying like that they would only have two kids for environment or environmental poor William and Kate they're like how dare you they were like oh. they have four kids like they're just like right yeah. but yeah so obviously then other than that there was the law suit this year mm-hmm. which was equally dramatic so that had started before the Oprah interview right yeah yeah so I think that had 
those proceedings proceedings had started at like the end of 2020 or something yeah. or even god 2019 but it like they went dates in back and it was getting 2018 every time yeah. she was actually pregnant though she'd had a miscarriage wasn't it and that's why she moved the first date and then the second date she said she had been pregnant they kept pushing it and pushing yeah. it but it was basically so she was suing um the publisher of the mail on sunday associated newspapers for publishing parts of a, a private letter private private in a comment um letter that she had sent to her dad daddy. in 2018 daddy <laughs> daddy she said daddy remember because it yeah. would get like she was like more dear, sympathy dear daddy <laughs> so <laughs> like, i think that i'm honestly from a legal perspective because obviously i'm studying law now i don't understand actually how she won the case because one of the big arguments she's had this entire time was that letter was never meant for publication mm-hmm. and it broke her right of privacy but then basically jason her Knopf, Knopf her uh, previous publicist was or head of press whatever came out and released all these emails where she's like telling him that she is wondering should she word use the word daddy because if this gets released to the press she wants to make sure it looks sympathetic mm-hmm. so from a legal argument side her argument completely falls void because like she is yeah. not telling the truth by stating that she never thought it was going to go and the other part which is why I'm really confused that she won the case is she lied to the court which mm. is really really not welcomed like in any court yeah but they asked her under oath would she have anything to do with the biography Finding Freedom which literally a, an aunt living under a rock would know that she was because every page is like in the billiard room, Megan says to to Harry, and I'm like, "How do you know?" Yeah, that? it's like extremely How, private. They're like in bed having a chat, and I'm like, like uh, "Yeah." Um. So anyway, she said she didn't, and then Jason released emails where she specifically told him what to say to the autobiographers. Um, gave a list of names approved as well for content, all that sort of stuff. And then she basically just apologized to the court for mm. lying. She said it was unintentional, and then she just won the case. Like to me, that's bizarre. Yeah. So like. So obviously the case had been on going for ages and there was loads of hearings and all this stuff was coming out in the press about it from court and everything. And then back in February, she won technically yeah. because the judge ruled that it it did breach yeah. her privacy by mm-hmm. them publishing the letter. And then Associated Newspapers appealed, appealed the decision yeah. and then they brought in this bombshell new evidence from your man, Jason, yeah. who gave, uh, supplied all these texts. And I remember seeing it and being like, she's lost the she's case. She's lost it. Yeah. Like completely. And then they just... Now, the interesting thing, like the way the judicial system works in England and Ireland is very similar. They're going to take it to the Supreme Court. Yeah, like, it is going to be will. appealed. They're not back. They're not going to leave it. And even as in, like without any thoughts about Meghan and Harry or anything, literally from a legal perspective, I have no idea how she won. Mm. Because in tort cases like that, civil cases where it's not criminal, it's um, the way you make a judgment is on the balance of probability. So when you're in a criminal case, you'll always hear the term beyond reasonable doubt. So you cannot send someone to jail for a crime unless you are beyond reasonable doubt that like they 100% did it but in tort cases like defamation and all breach privacy it just has to be on the balance of probabilities what's more likely so I'm just so confused after all that evidence the judge Mm. still was like yeah fine in her favor like she admitted to lying to the court so I think it's going to go to the Supreme Court Mm. and if it does like it'll be a landmark decision Yeah. because even in her statements after she won she was like this is a victory for everyone. It's like well this doesn't really happen to people. (laughs) We're like their private letters. Now there's parts that I I agree with like the UK press and the Irish press are very different and obviously Mm. there was the whole phone tapping hacking scandal Mm. that never happened in Ireland. You know there was the news of the world here. Mm, yeah and it got disbanded and turned into the sun on sunday mm. that's what the sun on sunday is it actually is the news of the world oh so it's all still that. owned by rupert murdoch aka logan roy um <laughs> same thing um yeah so they just literally days after this whole the kids the case was against the news of the world where they like tapped into everyone's phone they literally just deleted the news of the world i remember that night They're like delete delete <laughs> that night sun on sunday dot uk got registered and then oh. they moved all the staff. It's the same because News of the World was a Sunday newspaper. Yeah. So they're just, it's the same. They're like, mm. but so I get that. And maybe a part of this case is to kind of right the wrongs of things that are done before and to set the standard because everything in law is a precedent. So because she won this case, if anyone tries to sue a UK tabloid again for publishing a letter, they're going to win the case because she won it. That's how it works in yeah. law. So like it's a big thing for her to win it. So that would technically mean that any other news giant, like they cannot ever publish a letter like that ever again. Oh God. 
Now, that's obviously, such a knock-on effect. Yeah, that's how the precinct works. It's wild, but that's why the Supreme Court exists because they will decide. Like this is such a big deal to make that decision. So yeah. let's see. But like, it's not that I'm all for publishing private Supreme, letters. Like, the I don't. Supreme Court is like the, the final. T- you can't go you above can go. that. You can't okay. go above that. And when it's Supreme Court, it's like testing the law. That's when like this is the decision forever. Mm-hmm. But so I'd be interested to see what happens now. I'm not saying people should publish. Like we would never publish a private no. letter. But when you go back and back and back, and then you see the original emails, and she's very much aware and almost is 100% it is going to happen it's it's strange to argue that it shouldn't have happened also associated newspapers obviously have like so much money so they can just keep going with they'll this. just keep going yeah <laughs> they're like I think we're they gonna will go win. one more time but the thing is I actually really do like Meghan and Harry and I think they represent like this whole new world this new version of the royal family yeah. but it's like when I was talking about Taylor Swift before and the problem I had with how she slams all her exes I just have a problem with people that enact change and all that stuff by blaming other people. I'm like, yeah. own stuff yourself. Like, come out on your own. And and like, I just don't like that they play the blame game all yeah. the time. Everything is everyone yeah. else's fault. They never come out and say, you know, we shouldn't actually have done this this way. They, you know, even when they named their daughter Lilibet, the amount of backlash, like mm. literally every single royal insider said that if Queen Elizabeth was never told that she's like devastated that her nickname, which has been in private since mm. she was literally born, is now out in the world. Mm. And you, you, we never heard from them back on that. And it's not like it's like her middle name or it's something. It's her like childhood nickname from her father. Yeah, King like George. it's a real personal thing. I don't like know. I would say she is heartbroken because a lot of people say that she has a very very close relationship with Harry because again like what you were saying earlier he was the most upset in terms of Diana's death yeah, he was so young he was so young Somebody like 11 or something I do think he's very like her his personality mm. um, and as well everyone said that she really grew close to Meghan quite quick, quickly and apparently mm. the love of dogs was a part of it but even to the point where the Middletons were like annoyed that you know yeah, Meghan right. got to go right. for the Christmas Eve uh, or sorry Christmas Day lunch at Sangram wasn't oh it? yeah when she well I don't think they Kate were wasn't even, even allowed when she was engaged yeah and yeah. Harry and Meghan were engaged so like a lot of, this is why I think my issue is the rhetoric that no one welcomed her and they were all horrible to her is kind of difficult to understand mm. when not only did she bring Meghan she brought Meghan's mother mm. on Christmas Day even though it was like against even, the rules of the royal you know, family you know the way um, Meghan and Harry when they announced that they had plan- they were planning to leave the yeah. royal family not leave but like step down as senior yeah. royals and remember the Queen basically said in a statement through Buckingham Palace mm. that they were going to give them 12 months to really to think decide about it. Yeah. so they were like a 12 month what transition period what more can she period. do so I do think that the Queen tried to kind of bend I feel sad rules. for the Queen like I just feel like again from watching the ground but I just feel like she's had a really tough life her husband is now dead She's obviously not well. Like, she's just cancelled the Christmas mm. lunch for the first time in literally history. Yeah. It's never happened before. Is this how you want to spend your last few years with your grandmother ripping her entire legacy to shreds? Yeah. Which is what it feels like. It's like they want to take the royal family down. Mm. And then yeah. they kept saying in the Oprah interview, but, you know, the, my grandmother's amazing. I'm like, the queen is the firm. Yeah. But I've been like, the firm is the problem, but I love my grandmother. I'm like, that's yeah. the same person, technically. It's but no, confusing. they definitely were on the site this year more than ourselves. Like literally, <laughs> yeah. it should have just been changed. They dominated. It's funny actually. Headlines. I was in the venue the other day that we watched the royal wedding in, oh, and I was yeah. chatting to the manager, and uh, he was like, "When's the last time you were here?" And I was just like saying to him, or "Whatever." And I was like, "I was here one year for Meghan Harry, and he was there." And I was like, "Do you remember the Prince Harry cut out?" We were more emotional about that than we probably will be in our own wedding day. <laughs> yeah, like we remember uh, those photos. I just feel like the two of them think the whole world were against them. We were like all upset. Full them. Yeah, like an American actress from a show that I love. It's loved, like Grace Kelly, Grace and Monica. Like, yeah, it's great. If she can do it, we can all do it. <laughs> yeah. Um, another famous family that was on Goss study pretty much every second of the day this year is the Kardashians. Yeah, there's so much to talk about there, but I think we need to start off with Kim and Kanye split. Was yeah. that in 2021? Yeah, it was February. I won't lie, like that's one of the big, the most shocking splits. Like I knew they were in trouble, that didn't shock me, but just their whole journey, I've never seen two people more obsessed with each other. Mm. Well, maybe Courtney and Travis now. But remember like on the show, the night before the wedding, Chris gave a speech and she was like, I've never seen two people. Mm. Like so well fitting, so obsessed. And like to think that now it's all over. I know, ne- yeah. 
like I never thought that she because obviously it like there was a full year kind of leading up to her a lot actually of filing for a divorce and it was massively to do with him trying to run for president I think it put a massive strain I'm telling in the whole world that he she apparently tried to have an abortion yeah on and yeah so so bad but yeah I never really thought that she would have the balls to, to actually file for a divorce because you know she's and is the him. ultimate Kim and Kanye fan can I just say like you're a stan of them both like equally. I love them and it's actually like one of my I have it down in my notes it's one of my lows from 2021 because it's so sad I was like to Kendra let's put down our personal lows you're like Kim and Kanye no like <laughs> it's a personal um, low it's a personal low but um, I never thought yeah she would actually have the balls but then when I saw that she did so she filed for divorce in February and like immediately when it came, like the news was reported I was like Mm, I don't know I think she's kind of doing that to kind of scare him or something yeah. or to be like yeah I'm literally like like TMZ off. have the papers love like yeah yeah basically and uh but since then Kanye's obviously downhill. been very publicly trying to, to win get her, her back. back yeah and now Kim is off right well allegedly <laughs> well she's definitely with Pete she's Davidson a, yeah she's with Pete Davidson if they're not riding now well, what are I was they about doing to say she's riding Pete Davidson we don't know that for sure but like but they are looks like they are <laughs> Um, he wore her pajamas for God's he sake. He wore her pajamas. He's been in his, her bed. At um, least. So yeah, I don't know what's gonna happen there, but like, so the last thing he did, so he did a charity concert the other day for to free this inmate. Yeah. And um, very interesting that he did it with Drake. Can I just I say know. because they literally wanted each other dead? Because anyway. he, yeah, because he, there was an accusation that Drake and Kim had like a, and I saw one recently another thing. alleged uh, accusation that Drake and Kylie. Did you see this the other day? Oh, that goes back years. Yeah, like you wouldn't know. I'd you you would you would like <laughs> you, would. you. I love Drake. <laughs> you would. I met him. I high fived him. Just can I say I high fived him once? Um. So yeah, the last thing he did, he basically changed a lyric. He was performing "Runaway." Love that song. I do love that song. Um, and it was like the title sequence for the Kardashians. Yeah. The final season. Oh, so, that Tristan. So really symbolic. Pissed. Remember Tristan is really pissed off about it. Yeah. <laughs> he was like, "That's Shut an up. attack on me." Yeah. It's like, no, it's not. Remember, there was a whole argument about. Yeah, it. because they used it for the ad for the show, yeah. and they used the and ad. The for song Chloe. is he was like, like and like the song is basically like he's a dickhead run away from him and he was yeah. like how dare you use your music for our storyline it's like you are a dick and yeah. she should run away from you, <laughs> you are like what's the problem <laughs> don't get a twist to Tristan don't get you twisted. are a dick but I remember when I first heard that song thinking that there was trouble in paradise because I think Kanye does write 100% of what's going on in his life and that song is very much like I'm fucking up a little bit and I'm worried maybe you should leave mm. me yeah but yeah, he basically changed the lyric. So the lyric in the song, it's like, I want you to run right back to me. And then he changed the lyric at the end to be like, especially uh, Kimberly. And the, the whole crowd was like, ah. Oh. But then was literally, Kim, there? Kim was there in the audience with Kim's North. Kim's like rolling her But eyes. literally 24 <laughs> hours later, she filed. Uh, filed court papers to say that she wanted to be declared legally, legally single. single. She wants to drop West. West she wants gone. an immediate termination of their marriage. Oh and in the court papers, she's basically saying that Kanye will re- is refusing to agree to their split. Well, remember when, her, when she did the SNL Live stuff, the Saturday Night yeah. Live, and in it she said she was divorced it was obviously the script writers like so they weren't yeah. talking for us and he was like I didn't see no papers it's like you've been sent the yeah. papers Kanye but like he doesn't he even doesn't need want... to see the papers like, you can no, read like, it on the news here. he's like I didn't see no papers <laughs> yeah. it's like, he's like I front, pretend to not like, see it they're in front of you love <laughs> and like, I on. saw yesterday or was one of the other days just talking about how he's like trying to fight for her love but he's still shacked up with some model yeah oh my god what's her name she has a very weird some name some young girl yeah but it's very interesting. First of all, does Pete have her in that much of a trance that she's like, I mean, leave me off? Pete's hot, can I just say. Now, is KKW still called KKW at the moment? Yeah. Wow. I suppose she can just change it to KK. Like, I mean, like... Maybe she'll just she say is, W means like worldwide. Kim she Kardashian is worldwide. universally known as Kim Kardashian. I never called her Kim Kardashian West. You know what's always surprised me? Not why, that I call her, but like... Why Kris Jenner <laughs> has never changed her name back to Kris Kardashian. Remember, there's a few episodes where they talk about that. Yeah. A lot of it was to protect Bruce. And now it's just like so late in the game. What's the point in doing it now? Yeah. And then Corey would be like, what about me? Like, maybe they want to get Yeah, he's like, take Gamble. She's like, fuck off. Now, and (laughs) also as well, Kendall and Kylie have Jenner. And Kylie's her fave now. Yeah, Kylie's her fave. So. The billionaire would be the fave. The billionaire would be the fave. Um, Chris Kardashian's a good name. Mm. 
I do like that name. But yeah, it was interesting. I was just, it was not that I was shocked that it happened because there was a lot of trouble in paradise. Remember I'd said on the podcast before, there was like some week where he was like, I'm moving to Wyoming. And she was like, right. Yeah. I was like, that's exhausting. Exhausting. And I said it the last time when the Kardashians wrapped, we did an episode on it. That final scene really hit me hard when she was just like, I've had all the glamorous things. I've had the over the top romance, but I just want to be sitting down next to my husband, like watching a show I like. And yeah. it made me so sad. I know. I was like, it sounds well and good to be married to this genius superstar, yeah. but he's obviously a fucking nightmare. Yeah. Like when you're in your 60s and your kids are like growing up, do you want to be sitting next to someone who's literally not there? Mm. He's gone all the time. Maybe there's a side chick. Maybe there isn't. He's on tour. He's moving countries. He's becoming like the head of a fashion house. Then he's recording that. Like you just want to be sitting with someone. Yeah. It does make me sad because he obviously has like very serious, you know, Mental like he issues, said yeah. that he's been diagnosed bipolar. And she's talking about But he that has too. also very publicly said that he stops taking his medication. Mm. Take your fucking medication. I know. <laughs> and we've talked you know? about this before with like other situations, but like there's only so much you can do as a human yeah. adult for someone else. Yeah. Like you cannot look after someone forever. She has yeah. four kids. And like, I do think she tried so, so hard, hard to make I it do work. Think so and she just couldn't. I think it was really the fucking final straw. And I remember when she broke up with Chris Humphreys after a couple of days. But like remember <laughs> 72 how, to be exact. 72 days. <laughs> You're like four hours, three minutes and four seconds. It actually um, was 72 days. <laughs> but I remember watching that episode and really feeling for her when she was just like I just turned 30. I just wanted to get married it's like that iconic crying me like, yeah she's like, like oh. she's like i wanted the fairy tale like i want and i really felt bad for her so like she definitely seems a lot more balanced now like dealing with this breakup she only really cried once on the season now maybe she cried obviously more but remember she was just like i just feel like an idiot like that it's happening again that's actually the only thing she really said when when her and chris were having that conversation chris seemed more emotional and like sad for her but mm. she was more like this like you can very much tell Kim left the marriage. It yeah. wasn't this mutual agreement. Like she was she's like, like Fuck I off. can't do this yeah. anymore. I just, and I feel it's like sad. she's always the main person with the kids. Like she definitely takes on the weight of their family life. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And then like, so yeah, moving on from them, Chloe and Tristan then split in June. Yeah. Like, do you know whose all... romance is probably the only stable one is Kendall's. And we don't even know who she's dating half the time. Like I we know. know now, but like, Maybe there's something to that. Maybe she's learned when you put something public, it just ruins it. Yeah. Yeah, so Chloe and Tristan, Tristan. not surprisingly. We can't even disclose this too much. Broke up again. (laughs) Broke up again. (laughs) And like, it's kind of only, so they, it was reported back in June that they had split up again after they had rekindled their romance during during lockdown. Mm. And, um, so it was reported in June and everyone was kind of like, oh, classic. Yeah. And it's only kind of come back in the news recently because he's currently getting sued for child support. By we talked about this mama. on the podcast recently yeah. by uh, a woman called Marley Nichols who basically says that Tristan is her baby daddy. Baby daddy. And She's had the baby. She had the baby only la- like last week. So well, like, a few weeks ago. A few weeks ago. <laughs> yeah. And by uh, then you'll probably have fathered a new child by the time this episode comes but out. The, yeah. Honestly. The issue is she basically says that the, the baby was conceived back in March when he was celebrating his 30th birthday. In, and still dating Chloe. Still dating Chloe. Publicly. Which we know because she threw him a huge 30th birthday party. He's and like, posted I've already this had tri- one. Yeah. Like he posted <laughs> this tree. <laughs> I've already had a fun Yeah. Time. He's like, well. Well. <laughs> He, oh, she posted Chloe. like this really nice tribute to him and stuff. And now, like she's literally like, right, I feel like a fucking clown now. I know. He was off riding someone else. And he admitted in court documents that he was sleeping there for like two months. Yeah, like that. We, we're not even saying alleged here. Like, like he fully was like, no, I did. Have but again, as I've said previously, initially I felt sorry for her. Now I'm like, girl, if get she out of there, takes no. him back. No, at, no. no, I'm going to fly over to LA and knock yourself. on her door but and be like, I Chloe. Wouldn't, I wouldn't be Not surprised like. if she uses the embryos though. Just she'll be like, true needs a sibling. I guarantee yeah, you. Yeah, the Kardashians are really weird by having so the weird. same, the like same Scott, babies Remember with um, one his dad. rain... Uh, Courtney and Scott's youngest. Yeah, yeah. Remember that episode? It's the most like uncomfortable thing I've ever seen in my life. Where no, she's they in the very wardrobe, clearly, like hated each other, uh, like packing on her stuff, and she's like, "I'm pregnant," and he's like, he's "What?" Like, what? <laughs> and literally, both his parents just died. Blah blah blah. And like literally, he's basically feeling like a sperm donor. Mm. He's just like, "What? What? What the hell?" Yeah, because they've joked about the fact that like they would only have sex like twice a year. Or something. Just to literally, she was, like, have a child. literally just have a child. Like. I feel like with Chloe, she's going to do that. Because she'll be like, Tristan's already part of the family. He's in my life. 
But it's like doing her and her child a disservice to having the child with them. She's going to have 75 half-sister and brothers by the end of this. (laughs) Like, honestly. No, like, but it's interesting because it's kind of a similar... He's only 28. It's a similar thing with Kylie because Kylie Kylie obviously announced that she's having another baby with Travis Scott in September, Mm -hmm. which is so confusing because they broke up in, like, October, Mm -hmm. like, 2019 or something. But then, like, only a few months after they broke up, they were kind of still hanging out. And everyone was like, are they together? But they've never actually you confirmed said. that they were back together. And do you see this magazine cover that they tried to hide? Do you see all about this? Yeah, yeah. What after... magazine was that for? Nylon, is it? They did they did this magazine sheet with her pregnant. And it was about to go to publication after, obviously, the tragedy at Astroworld. Where, yeah. like, 10 people? 10 people, people died, died. Yeah. Um, So... The magazine pulled it from the shelves, but a few got delivered and there's photos of it now. Yeah. And in the interview, maybe it's Wonderland. In the interview, the writer says in it that Kylie and Travis are not together. Yeah. And this all only happened a couple of weeks ago. And then uh, Chloe came out and was like, they are together. Yeah. So someone posted uh, videos of the magazine on TikTok Mm -hmm. or something. Mm -hmm. And then she commented under it being like, I don't know what this is about, but they're definitely together. But like, I don't think a writer would like make it up. I feel like there's, we talked about this before, there's massive damage control going on Chris will oh, be pregnant Chris is like on Chris the will blower, be pregnant next like, month all the time. just to be like let's forget Astro World happened <laughs> I do feel really bad for Kylie like she apparently had her baby shower the other day and like obviously posted no photos like what yeah. can you do in that situation like you can't really show that you're loving life and enjoying life when people died mm. but it's like not even her gig I do, I do feel bad for them as a family like that they're having to deal with this at the moment and I Kylie has built this empire off her reputation and now her mm. reputation is like damaged I also think Kylie really this is just something that I've picked up on I don't think she has great pregnancies because you know the yeah. way she obviously kept the mm-hmm. first one completely under wraps we literally mm. had no idea she was pregnant well we yeah. did but like it wasn't really It was like photos from 75 miles away and yeah. all black. Um, yeah. But like even, you know, the way she was meant to go to the Met Gala. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously the Met Gala is usually in May, but it was rescheduled yeah, for go. September. She didn't go and she was meant She's to go. She's like really bad anxiety though, right? As well. Yeah. And mm-hmm. have you noticed like anytime she is actually photographed anywhere, she's very covered up. Mm-hmm. And like, I don't know. I just feel, I get the feeling that she, she doesn't has... have great pregnancies. Yeah. So I'd say this whole like it's not helping thing. like obviously I know, God it's love her. terrible but, but it's, it's terrible for all of them to as do well with her and um, before we go on to Courtney and Travis you just reminded me when you said TikTok we have to give it like a special mention to the Chanel oh advent yeah calendar. the advent calendar that's my favorite TikTok of all I time I cannot get over this like, like I watched it thinking this is going to be funny because the first one or two boxes are actually kind of okay yeah. they're like creams when she started the getting the stickers <laughs> and the empty Chanel bag <laughs> And so that was It's literally like a mini dust bag A mini dust bag So if you didn't If you didn't see this Basically, ring this, in. basically this girl Was given a or Sorry she bought A Chanel advent calendar For like $800 And now the box Was very cool I loved it It was like the original I love Chanel Chanel advent calendar But as she was opening It was like the most ridiculous Things were coming out But the funniest part of it Was then Chanel blocked her On TikTok but they did, blocked her. Well, did you see that they actually came back and said that they didn't actually block her? Mm-hmm. They said that the Chanel in like TikTok account just isn't active at all because like, of her video. But I just had to mention that TikTok. Um, so yeah, we have to talk about Courtney and Travis. I feel like they're the romance of the year. Yeah. Because it kind of came out of nowhere. Like they've actually mm-hmm. known each other forever. Like yeah. they've been close Neighbors. friends for a long time. You would never put them together. Mm-hmm. But they just seem to be so in love. And so I'm, in love. I'm all for it. Like the few of the PDAs, I'm like, no, I can't. But I still watch it. I'm still like, mm. I just love, and I said this before, I love this narrative. And the same with Megan and Harry. Like Megan met Harry 38. You know, Courtney's getting her happy ever after at 42. Like I'm a big fan of seeing these like amazing romances happening later yeah. in life mm-hmm. to women. But like I was saying to you before, like he kind of looks a bit intimidating. Like his tattoos all over him. But like I've watched interviews with him. He seems like the sweetest man. Yeah. And like, I think it's like well known in Hollywood that he is a lovely guy. A lovely guy. Yeah. yeah. There's no bad stories. There's no like side Well, chicks. Shanna Mochler will disagree. Well, his ex-wife. <laughs> But what ex-wife isn't bitter about a new romance, yeah. to be fair. Yeah. Um, but I just... She's never been like this before. Mm. 
the OTT straddling him. Well, if you remember Courtney and Scott in the early days of Keeping Up, though, they were very lovey-dovey. Yeah, so. She wasn't like, oh. Yeah, (laughs) I mean, like, this is like a next level. Like, they may as well be riding, like. But, like, I remember, so they, like, actually did start dating at the end of, like, 2020 or something. But we, they didn't confirm their romance. No, it was, like, rumours. Until... February on Valentine's Day when they posted that photo that of them photo, holding hands. Iconic. So cute. And He's then, just obsessed with her. That's obsessed. why I love it. And that's what every woman deserves. Yeah. Like and it's not like a queen. it's not like an over the top obsession, which I feel like maybe that's what happened with Kanye and Kim. They were like too obsessed or something. Yeah. It was I, all like big grand gestures. Yeah. And stuff. Like and like I love that. But again, I think back to that last episode where she's like, I'm kind of over the big gestures. With Travis I just feel like it's very, very genuine. Yeah. They're both a little bit older. They've had their children. They have their families. And they just, like, found each other. Yeah. I think and it's I just so love cute. it so much. And when she got engaged, I nearly dropped out. But, like, with happiness. Yeah. And I don't so even really cute. like Courtney. Like, of all the characters, she's my least favorite. As Kim would say, least interesting. <laughs> but, like, she is definitely my least favorite. But now I'm kind of like, you know what? Yeah. I'm starting to come a she's fan. She's getting her day in the sun. She's get- I just used to hate those episodes where she's like, you make my life hell. And then she'd be back again the next episode. But, like, in fairness, though, like, she was obviously dealing with a lot, like, Scott being a prick all the time. And, you know. Well, I'm talking about, like, two seasons ago. Remember, she took a break from the Kardashians. Oh, yeah. And then she came back. She's like, guys, I'm back. And I have this website called Poo and I'm like you're doing the exact same thing as the other girls she yeah. was like accusing them of being all about the money and then she came back and she's like so poosh is my new side I was like you're literally the exact same I do think her and Kim have serious problems like real like deep deep rooted sister yeah problems remember that episode where they literally fought each other oh that was so Plumps intense were ta- like I still can't believe they let that and air. I remember on the Andy Cohen wrap up episode, they he was like, "How did you decide to include that?" And they were yeah. like, "We promised our fans we'd be honest." Like, like I do respect them for that. It painted them in such a such terrible light. Same with like Kendall they're both Kylie. in their forties, you know, like, on their phone, fine. They're like, ah, literally, yeah. can hear screaming. So bad. This is the thing. Like, I think a lot of people who don't watch the Kardashians don't like them and they get a bad rap but I genuinely respect all of them yeah. I and mean, I don't respect their personal life decisions especially Chloe. but I respect them as business women I yeah. think so like smart. their gra- great grandchildren will live fulfilling lives with money like mm. they have literally broke the, the bank they're the most famous people in the world the most famous people in the world they were the first I feel celebrities to not just endorse products but bring out their own like I definitely think Kylie and the lip kits was kind of one of the first times a celebrity genuinely made their own brand mm. not like a Jessica Simpson hair piece which like you know they were kind of a part of other companies yeah. like Kylie went out on her much own slapping their name yeah. on something like Kylie superseded her own sister the most famous woman on this earth yeah. because she was like maybe I'll bring out a lip kit like the ideas might seem kind of silly but like I have such respect for them Kendall with 888 like yeah, that tequila company could overtake Kylie's empire like George Clooney is one of the richest men in the world because of his tequila company like I know they have advisors whatever but I still think the way they've used their platform I just think they're amazing I have yeah. such respect for them and as well especially with Kim the business ideas, the game, um, the shows, and then the law degree, passing yeah. the baby bar, and being in the White House, like bringing in legislative change, freeing prisoners. Pr- like, what can who she does that? not do? Who like, does that? So it kind of annoys me and people are like the Kardashians. And I also feel, and I've said this a few times, I think they brought Kirby back. Like, I think for when I was younger... Yeah. I grew up thinking Kate Moss is yeah, what beauty was. like was. the ideal. Yeah. Literally smoking a cigarette, looking anorexic. I thought that that's what being beautiful was. Mm. And I remember when the Kardashians came out, I was like, oh my God, her ass yeah. is huge. Now I know there's arguments the other way that people are like, well, now people are getting lip work. And, and they're promoting plastic surgery. And I get and that. Shit. But I I just love even good American Chloe's clothes. Like they go up to a size like 22. Like they're Same very, with Skims. Skims yeah. has an amazing size they're range. They're very much, and they're very inclusive with race, like color size like there's a lot of good that they've done yes they're extremely materialistic but like everyone is when they're rich this is the way it is Mm -hmm. but I do think they've brought I don't know like you know their their kids as well like you know like they've they've married people of different races there's a lot of topical things that go on in their lives that I really think will make people feel understood and feel yeah. like they could be a Kardashian well I think that like the proof is in the pudding the fact that keeping up with the Kardashians went for 14 years and like yeah. they could have kept going and they have a new show now um 
each one of them is relatable in their own way. Yeah. I know they're not really like they've kind of lost a bit of the relatableness now because they're all like billionaires, billionaires and stuff. Yeah. But still, like that's why I like the way they include the fights because like yeah. that's relatable. Yeah, like one of my favorite scenes of all time. This is what makes Kim look like a dope. Was obviously when she's like, my ear. Yeah, seventy five thousand dollars. <laughs> and Chris Humphries, I think that's when she realized it was a no, a yeah. no go for that relationship. He was like, it's an earring. Like, <laughs> Kim, yeah. people are dying. Yeah, like Kim, there's people that are dying. See, I she's feel like, like no. I feel like as well this year, this was Courtney's year because you remember that viral TikTok. It was like, I'm just living life. Just living life. She like A B C D E F G, and Scott's like, what is that? Like a lot of her trend. Sorry, her relationship with Addison Ray as well was the uh, one of the oddest things of this so year. So odd. I don't she like really... traded Addison Ray for Travis Barker. I know. Addison, <laughs> she was like, see ya. Sometimes because obviously Courtney and Travis are always with Machine Gun Kelly and uh, Megan, Megan Fox. Fox. I've seen Addison sometimes backstage at the gigs. She's obviously with them all. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, Megan Fox and Machine Gully will give Machine Gully. Machine Gun Kelly will give them a little mention. They're obviously a big couple of the year yeah. as well. And then I love them. Megan and uh, Courtney. Like Kim is so fucking clever. That skims shoot mm. was unreal. Also, people are speculating that her whole thing with Pete Davidson. So now the way they were in those Skims pajamas yeah. that he was shooting something for Skims. Oh, really? Mm. Like a unisex yeah. pajama? Yeah. I'd buy it. I'd buy it. I've actually never bought Skims because when I when they originally came out, it was like a seventy five dollar shipping charge. Oh my god! And then taxes of three hundred dollars. Like, when have you seen here. the price of the Fendi Skim stuff? That no, must be like a grand, is it? Yeah. But I would love a Skims, the white cream little outfit. You know, mm. the, I, I do like that. I'd yeah. be a fan of that. But again, Kim is just so good at doing the right things. Like she didn't bring out, so like clever. Kylie's swim range. That's one of the things that Ooh, are like, that was a 2021. fail. That was a 2021 fail. But what I love about Kim is like, she is promoting shapewear because she admits to everyone, I yeah, wear she's like, shapewear. She literally wears shapewear all the yeah, time. Yeah, and I loved that about her as well. Um, but yeah, it's been a funny year for the Kardashians. They've had as many highs and lows as we have, but just right. in a much more public domain. Yeah. Um, so I'm gonna leave that one last. Right, we have to talk about Britney Spears. Miss Britney. Free Britney. Spears. Now we have talked about this a few times. We won't spend too much time on this. Mm-hmm. Um so Britney Spears. The funny thing is, like, I feel like this has been going on for ages. And I was actually a bit blasé about it. Like, I remember when the Free Britney movement started, I was like, well, everyone just calm down. Because some of the theories were a bit out there. Like, do you remember everyone was like, she's not running her own Instagram? That's definitely been proven to not be true. She was running it the whole time. Yeah, well, like, that's not rare. That's not odd I know. with celebrities. So like, most celebrities would not like have their Adele own Instagram. Adele said this the other day Adele's in an interview. Banned. Yeah, like, yeah. she does not. She's not allowed. She's not on it, like. Yeah. So, like, now, but the thing is, I remember thinking as well, Sam Ashgari would obviously say that. He's with her every day. He'd be like, that's not Britney. Yeah. And there was all these conspiracy theories. just like, oh, my God, Britney on the beach. That photo is from four years ago. Maybe she posted a photo from four years ago. Yeah. Then. So there was a part of me that you was all like, do it on your hinge profile. You all do it all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I see. Sorry, I photos heard, from 2016. I, you I, don't look like that I've anymore. Heard dating stories of that, or someone walks in and it's like, where, where's blah blah? And it's like it's me. Yeah, <laughs> I've never like, been oh. catfished. I, I actually think guys normally look better. Yeah, in my experience. Yeah. Um. But yeah, sorry. So. Wait, Brittany <laughs> and the photos. I and derailed the photos. you there. So I was a bit blasé at the start and I've said this the whole time. I've said this to you. I 1000% would bet my whole life's earning that there are definitely medical and psychological issues with Britney, right? Mm-hmm. So when the beginning of the campaign was like, she's been, it's all a lie, she's fine, blah, blah. I was a bit like, hmm. I, I don't I don't think she's fine I think she needs some sort of help but then when it started coming out the details of the conservatorship yeah for example the most shocking one of the most shocking moments of this year and I feel like everyone will remember where they were when they heard Britney's live testimony in court mm. where she literally said that like she was being forced to have um it was obviously like the coil or something in her an IUD an IUD she wasn't able to get pregnant I remember being like that's what? Weird. Yeah. Then there was a few things in her testimony. Again, I was a bit like, mm, she was told she couldn't get her nails done, but I was like, that's probably COVID. <laughs> like she, she wasn't allowed to drive her car. Wasn't drive her car. That's fucking weird. They were forcing her to go to the therapist office, and I did think that was so yeah. cruel because the photographers knew where it was, mm-hmm. and she had begged them, just let them come to my house because I'm being seen crying. Yeah. So then I was a bit like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, actually, there's a lot of stuff in this that's so fucked up. Mm-hmm. Like the idea of a conservatorship in the first place, I wasn't overly. 
against because when she first got it she had literally had a breakdown her kids got taken off her you know there was a lot of rumors of substance abuse stuff like that so I remember at the time being like I think she needs Mm. help like she does but this year just blew everything wide open and it's not like she randomly like suddenly became famous at like 20 or something like she was in the Mickey Mouse club yeah she was like a young star and like we all know Hollywood is weird. Like I'd say she's been through loads. a lot. Yeah, like so yeah. much stuff. Yeah. But it kind of, so she had obviously been in the conservatorship for like over 10 years when this all kind of started, to, the whole Free Britney movement mm-hmm. started like kind of hitting headlines and stuff. But it really kind of started coming into the press when she requested a review of her yes. conservatorship yeah. when her dad Got basically... Sick. No, her dad like forced her into a mental health facility oh, yeah. in 2019. Mm-hmm. And uh, because he said that she had stopped taking her medication. Very weird. Like it's all mm-hmm. kind of a gray area, that mm-hmm. whole thing. But she basically said that he forced her to go to a mental health facility, which is against what the conservatorship is. You know, like you can well, manage in a conservatorship, you can, money you can and make, stuff. You can make decisions but you can't, you can't force them into a mental health facility facility that's like against the law oh is it oh, yeah okay. so don't that's... you have to be cl- uh, clinically or don't you have to be like technically uh submitted into mental health facilities though like without people's consent that happens all the time i don't know i think you would have to get a there's a An specific or- court term. order or yeah something. it's like a court yeah, okay. order thing and you just threw her in there yeah right so I that's kind that of part. what kicked off the whole conservatorship even being reviewed mm-hmm. and i remember like a lot of people don't even know what a conservatorship is so people were I kind do. of reading into yeah. it and stuff it's um, normally for like elderly or people that have dementia like. yeah or people have disabilities there's a lot of very vulnerable people yeah but one of the areas, which is the area she's in, because I saw a lot of people being like, it's not normal. That's not really true. Like some people who maybe would have psychological issues or drug abuse problems, conservatives would be quite normal because them accessing money would mean buying drugs. So a lot of times mm. conservatives come in for that because it's like if they yeah. have access to their own money, they're going to spend it on things. And I think that was one of the major reasons she got into the conservatorship. Yeah. Because I remember there was a report at the time that when her dad, and I, do, I actually do genuinely think it's a very, very start. Her dad genuinely was worried about her and mm. genuinely took over and helped I think I then do it think got initially weird. the conservatorship did help her yeah and it was needed but like but then now, people got yeah. greedy like especially like I was saying I was a bit unsure taking advantage when the stuff started coming out and you started to realise how many people were making money off her conservatorship mm. it was like no wonder they don't want it to be over because there's so many different salaries she was yeah. paying but the weird thing was the whole time Britney said nothing right so mm-hmm. framing Britney Spears came out in 2021 mm-hmm. which was that documentary about what really went on and it opened such a topic of conversation because yeah. there was interviews in that I remember with Lindsay Lohan Paris Hills and there was a lot of talk about how women were treated back then Justin Timberlake got dragged yeah like dragged so. because obviously he made like um <laughs> we Crime River. We so, so much, much. On this podcast. if he's listening right now he's like dear <laughs> he's um, like a dear but like there was a lot of questions over you know how he you know, went on radio and said that he took her virginity. Yeah. He very, very openly made that video and made an entire career off the breakup and slamming her. And she actually never said anything about Justin. Yeah. So the documentary was really, really good. And that kind of started people to go, oh, it's not just crazy Britney fans being like, free Britney. It was like, no, oh my God, like maybe she is yeah. in trouble. But then Framing Britney Spears came out and she didn't say anything. So it was still like, what's going on? So I think the moment where that audio leaked of her testimony, yeah, everyone, everyone was, was like, like what oh. the fuck? And she was just like, I haven't had control of my life. I want my life back. She had never said a word. No. So I think that's when everyone actually really started she to She kind notice. of alluded to things to her Instagram post, but yeah. nothing really Concrete. like set. And, yeah. I have to say it is one of the most amazing stories of the year because mm. if it wasn't for her fans, this literally would not no. have happened. No. Like framing Britney Spears would not have been made without the fan community who like literally went out of their way Way to dig 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 mm-hmm. to protest outside the courts to you know comment on her photos where are you free britney blah 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 and then remember right up to the court day her now fiance sam Ashkari wore the free britney top and we were like yeah. oh my god yeah. it's getting real mm. so it was just such a shocking day when everything came out and she admitted it and she started actually standing up for herself i just i couldn't believe it and then i feel like all of hollywood came out like justin tweeted yeah. And basically was like, I fucked up a treat like shit. He didn't say those words, but he was like, you know. And he was like, me and Jessica are behind you. I was like, oh 
my god and then like every celebrity was like hashtag free Britney yeah like definitely the courts were under severe pressure to get her out of the conservatorship mm. now in the end did her dad voluntarily leave it I think that's yeah technically, well he was essentially forced he was forced to, though. Like, but technically to. so that's basically what happened so and where is she at now so it's been terminated. So does she have no conservator? No. So technically, there she does still have like the a financial the advisor. Yeah. There is still someone and there. And she said she wanted that. Remember she said, yeah. I still do want yeah. certain aspects, but I don't want my dad. Yeah, she's like, She wants like third off, parties basically. who have nothing to do with her life. Yeah, pretty much. Now some of the stuff she's come out with obviously has been a little bit worrying. Like she basically said she wants all her family to go to jail, including her like sister and her mother. Like mm. that was a bit worrying, but I guess... When you, we don't know the hell that she's been through. Maybe she genuinely yeah. is that angry, but there's definitely a problem there with her mother. There's an issue with their mm-hmm. relationship. But I'm interested to see what happens for her next. Like when I saw the, what was the other documentary? Not Framing Britney. Do you remember there was a new one? Um, it was a different channel. Britney versus Spears. Yeah. And it was on Netflix. In the, Netflix, yeah. So in that one, remember the guy, he hadn't been in the other series. He was talking about how he she got to drive her car one day or something yeah. and she was just like, I haven't driven my car. And like she had to be given the keys and he was like, it was the Was that that thing. paparazzi guy yeah, that yeah. she dated? Yeah. yeah. And he was like, she Forgot wasn't about allowed. Him. So since then, obviously on her Instagram, she's talked about getting the keys to her car, driving. Yeah. Going to an ATM. Going to an ATM. Her and Sam got engaged pretty much straight away. They've yeah. been on vacation together. She's a bad photoshopper. Right. No, I want to say this myself, <laughs> but she, did you see some of the pictures she's put up well, and she's like, guys, the bath is just curvy. <laughs> did you see that one? Did you not see this? It's the funniest, like, I'm like, Brittany, no. That's actually kind of gone. No, like the, the bath is like It's this. like, Rrr. and then other photos. It's not. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, you do, you gotta Listen, do, Listen, you you're having do. a bloaty day. She's had a shit 13 let, years. Let her on. Photoshop, let her Photoshop. Let her on. No, I feel like 2022 is going to be the year of Brittany. I think her and Sam are probably going to get married. Yeah. Maybe they're going to have a baby. They've talked about that now. So I'm interested to see that. But yeah, that was like a feel good story in the end. The title of this episode should be why should we, why we should let Britney Spears Photoshop her photo. Yeah. <laughs> Just yeah. let her on. Live your best life. Live your life. Oh my God. Where is, you know, that original video from like the naughties. Leave Britney alive. Oh my God. That was, like, um, where is oh he at? the name of that guy? Where is he? Like, he must have something to say now. I can't remember the name of He's that like, guy. leave Britney alone. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, leave Britney alone. You know, everyone's now like, now I get it. Now I get it. Um, <laughs> he and started the free Britney movement. He technically. Do you remember <laughs> yeah, that video? Did. The mascara run down. What was um, his name? It's like Chris something. That was such an iconic video. <laughs> so Speaking good. of iconic videos, I saw the man slipping on the ice the other day and I just, <laughs> I can't <laughs> that breathe. That never get old. Have you ever watched um, Kevin McGarren's uh, video where he pretends to be the guy from Slipping on the Ice? <laughs> no. What? I don't think Are so. Are you? I feel like I played it in the office a couple of years ago. Maybe I have seen it. It's really funny. He goes back to the scene and he's like putting salt everywhere. Where is that? The video of the fake Yeah, remake. like where was it? YouTube. Oh, it's in Dublin. Uh, no, but where? Oh, I don't know. But I you're feel like it's, it's outside the doll or something. I can't remember. But like Kevin McGarren, it's the I met. I remember he was hosting Public Italy. He was like the biggest name at the time, and I met him at a party, and I was like, "That's slipping on the ice." Video. I was like, "I, I died." It was McGarren before he somebody. became like. It was years ago, but it's really funny. He's like wearing a helmet around his own house and everything. And he's, <laughs> he's basically like always falling, and then he goes. <laughs> oh my god no, I need like to watch this back to see the <laughs> with pockets of salt <laughs> it's so good oh my god <laughs> we need to watch this after but there was a Gigi Carr tweet the other day it was like <laughs> how we hoped for 2021 to end and it's like Leonardo DiCaprio smiling and then it's like Omnicron and it's your man slimming up <laughs> <laughs> oh my god did you see that video actually I shared on Twitter of that video and it was just like this music to your man slipping and it turns into all these drag oh yeah I saw yeah so funny sorry another big story from this year while we stick on on trend Maura Higgins (laughs) she She, was in the news a lot lot. this year so do you know what really made me sad is when her and Chris Taylor broke up (sighs) I genuinely was like, this is love. Because that was... They're best friends. Yeah. There was rumours. Because what you think it was all? Oh, the start of 2021, obviously we were still in lockdown. Mm. That was the longest lockdown we've ever had. So those few months, remember there was pictures of her in the UK going for lunch with all the Love Islanders, but like outdoors. Yeah. And there was rumours she was with your man... Michael. Michael Griffith. 
not a fan of him now. Yeah. And then her and Remember Chris, Destiny's childish. Her childish. <laughs> childish. Um, but then remember then she did a few TikToks with Chris and we were like Yeah. And there was that one where she had to like jump on him and he caught her and I yeah, was like, they've we definitely like, had sex. Oh. Like you don't know You're not that limber but remember We did our end of year podcast Last year And one of our highs Was that Maura and together. Chris Had got together And then they broke up. They broke my heart When they broke up So they broke up in like April Which was devastating And they released A statement I mean it was yeah. like The death of a friend It yeah, was like so sad. We're so And Chris I feel like it's kind of I haven't seen him since What do you think happened there Like I'd say maybe I'd were, say like, maybe too, They were like We're too close Too friendly Because that was a COVID something. romance Like they were in the little bubble Everything was locked down. They were just living together, kind of. Do you remember they spent all their time yeah. together? Maybe they felt like they were two like brother and sister. But I got such a shock when she got with Giovanni. Giovanni I'm not a fan. For me, G- I'm not a fan of him. Right? There's been many a story about Gio. Do you remember yeah. a couple of years ago he was partnered with Laura Whitmore on mm. Strictly and there were, he made a lot of accusations about Laura and then she made accusations about him. Like there was definitely like trouble there. Yeah. So when I saw them got together, I was like, oh God, I hope he's like a good guy and like he treats her well. And then they broke up this year as well. Yeah, so like I think there was, and it was only like a month or two after her and Chris broke up. I know. There was kind of rumors that she was seeing uh, Giovanni. And everyone was kind of like, random but anyway and then in July they posted that Instagram photo together they and everyone was were like PDA right. central see yeah. most times when I see PDA I think there's trouble in paradise mm. I'm like why do you feel the need to show us so early yeah except for Courtney and Travis but they had like a proper whirl, whirlwind romance and they mm. were about to move in together and then in October shit went down split Bill. Like what happened they What's been the reports Around their breakup So the reports are very much That Giovanni was like See Good luck to you Kind of thing And I'm back Laura was devastated love. Yeah And they were obviously About to move in together And all this stuff And Maura hasn't really Said anything about it mm-hmm. But Giovanni put a statement On his Instagram Being like Look like some, Sometimes things Just don't work out Kind of thing Which is like What a shitty Sometimes I'm a dick Yeah, yeah. Um. So that's Sad. That was sad. But she's kind of living her best life. She was just on holiday with and um, then, Lucy Oh, Donovan. yeah. I Sorry, I loved the photos of and, the, Mal- the Maldives. Yeah. yeah and then gorge. she recently... So it was kind of... There was a report recently that she was leaving her management company and that this she kind of wanted to... This is the oddest thing to me Yeah, she wanted to go within a new direction with her career. She kind of wanted to stay away from reality TV and, and become a modeling. proper model. And she's signed with Elite, which is like a huge, huge agency. Know. Yeah. I don't get it though. Like, you're not a model, you're a celebrity. Like I I want Maura to go and I'm a celeb. Like I think she's done with TV. Re- well, reality TV. <sighs> I think she wants Like to the be... reason everyone loves her is because her she's Maura and I like know. she's bold. But it's and weird brash her and, and yeah. Molly May have this very weird almost hatred, hatred for of Love, Love Island. Island. And it's like right that's So I don't know, did you to. see that Molly did this big interview with the diary of a CEO host, mm. um yeah. Steve and it was interesting like there was I mean I heavily disagree with this but she said that like she would still be where she is now without Love Island I'm sorry that Hard is bull disagree. shit you would not be the creative director she would, of she Pretty would in thing. her fuck be with Tommy Fury well yeah that never would happen never <laughs> obviously not never but it, and I don't understand what the hatred is Mm. Why does she not want to be associated with the show? The know. show didn't show her in a bad light. Nothing negative happened. Mm. She went in at 19. She was very young. That show made her who she is. Yeah. I would never have come across her. Maybe she would have built a good following. I'm not saying she wouldn't, but she would not be the creative director of Pretty of Little Thing. Thing. No. She would not be a multi millionaire with all these deals. Mm. Her own tanning brand. Yeah. Name one influencer in the UK that has their own tanning brand. Exactly. Yeah. So that annoyed me a bit, but her and Moore have obviously got so close, and I think the two of them now have stuck to this idea where they weren't on the yeah, it Let's does not annoy me because it. It, it makes there's kind of an air of that they feel that they're better, better than, than Love, Love Island. Island. And yeah. it's like Love, Love Island's Island's not the that biggest bad. show on TV. I know, it's where it was California or Jordy yeah. Shore, Shore. No like, shade to no, no, but I just mean like as in with those shows that like you literally see people having sex. Yeah. It's like fair enough if they did something wild. The two of them. Like we're like especially Mora, she was like historical on it. Lena Dunham tweeted about yeah. her being a Amy feminist Schumer. icon. Yeah, and she's like, I don't talk about it. So I do find that a bit weird. I also find the model thing weird. I feel like modeling's over. 
Like I do. As yeah. in like unless you're going to be in Paris Fashion Week or you know you're literally doing the shows for Prada or Versace. What is a model? Yeah, there like, isn't a lot of models that are just not models anymore. that are famous. No. Like it's the Kate likes Moss of Kendall Jenner, and Gigi Hadid, where yeah. they're famous for other things. But also they got to the height of their fame model wise because of Victoria's Secret, which yeah. is also gone. Mm. Like is, is in terms of that show. In the the show, show is gone. Yeah. So I don't know, like more is all already doing Anne Summers and she has the most incredible body. Oh like, my god, insane. She is a model I just don't see the need to, to like break away from a general management but yeah. let's let's see what she does I'm interested to see she also presents the glow up on RT and yeah. she said recently on her stories that like she really wants to go back that she's really enjoyed that she's loved that and she got a lot of praise for that like got people praise did really for that. like her on that and I agree with you I think with her like obviously she's beautiful to look at so I like following her but for me it's her personality like yeah. I love that's why people hear in her chat I love her her opinion on things yeah. like that scene with Tom. Mm. Are, you <laughs> Are you joking? Like that whole oh my god, that's one of the best TV moments of all time. Yeah, but that's, that's why people so love her though. Because remember yeah. when she initially came on the show, people didn't love her because of her looks at all. Well, not only her looks, she didn't was like, like her. "Do you want me to hug you at night?" Yeah, to Tommy. But like people didn't initially like her because she was a bit like, and weird she to Tommy. really very easily escaped her own complaints. Because remember, she basically jumped upon Tommy and tried to kiss him and he was like no 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 remember she tried to kiss him if that had been Tommy trying to kiss her there'd be complaints yeah Yeah. so yeah I just I love her I love any person any woman especially from Ireland that becomes successful but I don't understand let's not talk about the the violence ever again hatred of love island yeah Yeah. it's It's like look at Brian Dowling like he's accomplished so much in his, his life he'll always talk about Big Brother yeah and like he literally got sacked from Big Brother as yeah. the host and he is still like Big Brother yeah. made me who I am yeah. you know what I mean I so I don't I don't understand that part really mm. um, but speaking of Molly May we should mention obviously she's had a bit of a mental year like obviously the robbery like God love I do feel really bad for her like they've had to move mm-hmm. out of that apartment how much stuff was stolen I think like 800,000 pounds worth of stuff. designer stuff and now she's spending money on 24 hour security like but it goes back to Kim Kardashian being robbed back I in 2016 know. have it's we learned nothing the things that you post on Matter. social media yeah. like people, people are, are watching. watching yeah and they will try and, and rob you like as we all know people know my address so like imagine being actually famous like surely yeah. everyone knows where you live so you, do you really need to be like this is my life like Dorit Kemsley yeah. from Real House of Beverly Hills she's been like I mean imagine the fear like I'd be shook for life if someone Mm. now even hers was worse because wasn't she tied up in the house or something happened yeah wasn't Uh, she in the house I don't know if she was tied up but she she was was there there. and like they were like threatening and stuff yeah that's horrible but like you know it's so easy to find out someone's address these difficult. days. Like, watch you on Netflix. Like, I was just you about can, to say, have you seen you? Because like, it's so that's easy. That's like a roadmap to how to stalk someone. Yeah. Like, taking notes. <laughs> taking notes. Like, honestly. Yeah. But no, I did. I felt really bad for her. I'm also like, where's the ring? Tommy? Yeah. Where's the ring? I'd say he's going to propose. Like, Lucy I'm predicting that, that he's going to propose very soon. But by the time they say they're probably married. Yeah. Um, Lucy Donlan and Luke random they engaged. only started getting together last year well this hope for Sultan we might be engaged by the time <laughs> <episode> comes out <laughs> to each Cheers other to that. I'm like <laughs> oh my god oh. Cheers. Um, right we'll move on from Maura and um, oh my god Maura and Molly May. Molly May to kind of one of the last things I wanted to talk about where we will actually talk about one or two more stories but just while we're on the topic of Love Island in general like when we do this episode at the end of the year, we actually do genuinely look at the stats and we're like, what were the biggest stories of the year? And All every single one was basically Love yeah. Island. Now, there was no better series, obviously, than the Mora series. Like that, I mean, that just goes down Iconic. history. Iconic. But and that I, was the last pre-COVID really The last series. summer series. Yeah. Because we had the winter series, yeah. which was rubbish. But <laughs> I mean, come on. Let's call it spit. Let's call it spit. spit. Um, but this season, I loved it. I Loved got really, it, yeah. really, really into it. Mm-hmm. Faye, the drama of this series. I remember watching episodes being like, oh my God, movie night. So good. Did you know me? They got rid of the lie detector test and I was devastated. Yeah, so I was like, you were like, bring that. it back. Bring it back. Um, but there were so many snakes, including like snakes. my least favorite character. Yeah. I'm going to say it now. Jake. 
Jake. And you know what I love about Love Island? And a lot of people, it's like the Kardashians, a lot of people slam Love Island for promoting boob jobs and lip jobs and being skinny and being that. I disagree. Like, Maura stood up for herself. Yeah. Remember with Michael and Amber, it really showed what gaslighting was. Yeah, yeah. And then I felt this year with Jake and... Liberty. Lib. It was the same sort of... She felt so shit about herself. And I loved that in that final episode when they were breaking up that they showed him kind of saying to her like oh you're such a mess yeah. and da 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 like sometimes it is very small things over and over that yeah. is literally abusive behaviour yeah. and to see her knowing that she was close to the end knowing that they were one of the original couples they could have won to see her stand up for herself and be mm-hmm. like if you don't love me the way I love you this isn't enough Yeah. imagine the amount of young girls watching that show being like Do you know what actually I feel that way. Like you could tell this year, definitely since Caroline Flack's death and a lot of the other, the two other contestants who uh, lost their lives after, like took their own lives. You can tell that they're getting like daily therapy. Yeah. And we'll talk about that in a second about yeah. Faye as well. But I remember watching Lib thinking she's definitely spoken to somebody. Yeah. But I thought that was an amazing episode just to see her. I mean, how many girls do you know would be able to walk away? Oh my God. Not just from the relationship, but from the money, from winning the show. But like she's kind of this year's more and now. Like she's getting the biggest yeah. deals. And I just, I had so much respect. I like shed a tear and for her. And she was only 21. Like how? How? And that was her first relationship, wasn't it? Yeah, I think so. Like, he was such a but snake. But it was definitely all about the girls this year and that's yes. what I loved so much. We kind of talked about it during our Love Island live stream, which was Good fun. Uh, but like, yeah, it was definitely all about the girls this year. I think they were kind of came out as the real winners. You know, yeah. I loved Chloe, loved Millie. And they all won. got on with each other. Yeah, there was which no Which hasn't happened every year. And even like Abigail and... Chloe, like technically they should have hated each other. Yeah. They didn't. They Everyone like, was just like getting on with the girls. Everyone was doing well. Yeah. But it was interesting when I was watching Molly. Did you watch Molly's interview on the Diary of CEO? No, I just saw clips. It's good. But she talks about going on Love Island and she was like, obviously it was a business venture. She was like, no one goes in that house looking, looking for, for love. love. Some people actually do. And I'm like, I don't think, like I think some people do. You but know. you said this during the Love Island live stream event we did. Like, this year was the first year they talked about it being a show. Mm. They talked about the cameras. They've never done that before. They've never done that before. I definitely mm. think it's harder to root out who's the snake because everyone knows they're going to get there. Do you remember, um, oh my God, what was her name? Lucinda. Yeah. When uh, Brad left for her, everyone yeah. was treating like, she just wants her boohoo deal. Like she did. She got and she got it. Deal. Yeah. Fair like enough. it's definitely changed. I think originally people were just like, I want to meet someone. Yeah. Maybe I'll get a deal now. It's like, I want to make 10 million like yeah. more I did. But yeah, my other highlights from this year, Faye. I loved her. She she kind of made the series because she- It would have like, been boring. There was so much drama. Him. Yeah. Like there was a lot of talk that the producers shouldn't have let it go so, too far. But I don't really know. Like- when she was shouting at um, Teddy, Teddy, love Teddy, Teddy, oh and can other I just people. say the sad? Well, everyone, the saddest scene of the series when he brought that Teddy back. Oh no! And left and it then down, he just and faced it down. She was like, lips. "Shit!" She was like, <laughs> oh my god! I was just like so <laughs> upset. Like the moment she realized she fucked up, she was like, she and you up. could see that she was like deeply hurt oh, from other situations. Like, sure. I feel like you do something like that. If you saw a guy in the house, I think you'd be like, I'll never speak to him ever again. <laughs> You're good at being like, fuck him. I'd be like, like you'll never I'll be, see me I'll again. be waiting for him being like, you there? With like another teddy. <laughs> you would. You'll have a little backup a teddy. Little seven I'd be like, right, teddies. fuck off. You'd be like setting them on fire. I'd be like, here's another one. No, I've changed. This year I've changed. <laughs> You I have. I have. I have changed. Okay, New Year's resolution. You're like 2022. change my love life. Um, <laughs> But no, Faye, like now, when she screamed at him, obviously not on. And that yeah. was another time where we definitely saw there was a care team and they definitely yeah. stepped in. Because yeah. suddenly the next episode, she was like, I'm going like, to talk Ooh. to Teddy. And I'm like, how have you gone yeah. from... Rah! And like the finger pointing. <laughs> yeah. I was like... But I think as well, Faye wanted to be the season's Mora. And I get it. Like if you're in there, you don't know what's being shown. You don't know how much you're being shown. You might throw a little argument here or there. Yeah. Like as much as I love Mora, she was very very planned like she knew yeah. I'm gonna shout at that lad 
I'm going to do that. I'm going to stand in front of everyone. You remember Tom called her embarrassing. She kept screaming. Mm. She was like, embarrassing? I <laughs> Everyone's like, oh my God. I think that's maybe where Faye started. But mm. obviously it got to the point where people were like, this is but abusive I get behavior. that though. Like if I was to go on the likes of Love Island, I would just be so concerned the entire... How could you not be concerned about the way you're coming across? I know. And like the power that editors have. I know. Like, so one of my best crazy. friends was on Big Brother and like... I remember her telling me about being in there. She was just like, I had no idea. And then you yeah. come out and like, the, the, they're this, filming all the this time. This team are just like, oh, this is what was in the press. And she was like, what the what? fuck? Yeah. And there were so many other things that happened and they never showed mm. it. And she was like, what? And it could be one thing that they picked up on that happened for like a minute yeah, or something. Yeah, and then it's the whole storyline. Yeah. Like, it's so crazy. But no, I did, I actually did like Faye, despite mm. the drama. I really liked Faye. I'm a fan of her and Teddy as a couple. Like, I do think they're going to be. And they're still be, together. They're still together. Live, living together. Um, some of my least favorite characters characters right so jake is the top snake um hugo remember when we did the live stream um, i just wanted to deck him deck. <laughs> remember we had, so anton, annoying. we had anton Danny like, look on uh the love island stream we did with camille and he was like does he know he's on love island yeah like he kept getting these beautiful women and he was like i'm just not he was feeling like it. Mm, and then remember he kissed amy and he was like well that's done or something like that yeah he was like job done job amy done. was like Although oh remember gosh. afterwards it came out that apparently he did a couple of takes and that's why he said yeah. job done. But that scene where he was like, well, I didn't find anyone, blah, blah. And Amy's like, excuse that's me. That's an iconic mem Such that will live an iconic forever scene. more. Yeah. So he he was a character I wasn't a big fan of. Um, who else wasn't I a huge fan of? Oh, Tyler. I knew Tyler and Kaz were going to break up. I never believed him for a single mm. millimeter of a second. Yeah. Remember the first night he came in, he was like, hey, babe. And Kaz was sitting on his lap and I was like, no, 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 no. He's been watching this motel room. Yeah, and he knows Kaz that he loves has been Kaz. fucked over by Toby who literally got with everyone this year. <laughs> yeah. And but still. That him. was all planned. Mm. It was definitely planned. Yeah. And I, one of the things I really, see, I hate saying enjoyed because like it's, Obviously not it's fun obviously for them, feelings, yeah. but they don't sign up for. It. Um, the Cas- they got their boo Casa is Amor. This probably is the most dramatic Casa Amor ever. I think. Yeah. Like the fact that the winners of this season, that one of them straight in Casa Amor, yeah. is what million Liam. Now Liam's right, right? But like that whole drama, I'd say the producers I think were like, was, thank God, Millie and yeah, Lily. Like you million, couldn't write it. Lily. You couldn't but it write was it. like, aside from the fact that it was like one of the winners that actually did it, it was, I think it was the first year that that many of them actually did stray. Because I think it was only Teddy yeah. and uh, Jake that didn't stray. I remember at the time there was a lot of talk that there was no chemistry between the couples. Like yeah. the first week or two were a bit dry. Yeah. Like I do remember Faye was coupled up with like 75 people. You know what she I kept think getting mixed down. around. You know what I think that's down to though? The fact that it was like during COVID. No, I think the men they recruited this year were just shit. Because really? the girls are such strong personalities. And I remember all the lads kept using the word chill. They kept being like, we just want some chill. It's like they went for such strong personalities with the women. They didn't find men with strong enough personalities. Like, do you who know had a mean? strong personality out of the guys? Think about it. Yeah. Someone who came across really strong, spoke really well, was really funny. I'd say Teddy is maybe the only one. Yeah, like I love Toby, but he did not come across like that. What did like Liam, we love Toby did Liam discuss? kind of towards the end in a funny way because he was such a disaster. No, in the end, Toby was one of my faves. Yeah. But like, think about Brad, right? One of the hottest men on this earth. But literally the most Never boring. asked a question about anyone. Yeah. Didn't give a shit. So I think, remember when you think of the very first cast, the lads mm. were shit. Yeah. And I don't mean like shit people, but the personalities just, they weren't there. They need to get, I think, uh, what the OG girls this year were brilliant. So But good. they need to get better OG cast members in terms of the lads. They need an OG Irish person. They always Greg put O'Shea in. is one of my favorite all-time They always put in Irish people as a bombshell. Can we get a fucking Irish OG person in there, please? Sorry, another moment I'm a big fan of was Matthew McNabb. Love we're, Matthew. We're, we're done. We're Remember done. I got him to do it on the Love Island live <laughs> yeah. show. Like, it was just such a shocker. I was like, oh my God. And he nearly went for Faye as oh, well. Oh yeah. And she was talking. Yeah. So he was strong for Sally, but yeah, we have to talk about Toby. <laughs> there were so many him. funny bends because we were getting to the point where, do you remember that time that singer came in to perform? What's her name? Let them know. Do Mabel. You, Mabel. And we were we put up that meme on the Instagram page, been like, I'm he's gonna, gonna re- try to get with like, Mabel. Re- <laughs> Mabel. Every time he coupled with someone, he'd be like, 
He'd be uh, like, she's thinking of someone else. <laughs> yeah. Which Moore was no. very good at on her series. It was the moment like when he had, because he had obviously like <laughs> left Abigail like, twice. for Mary. Yeah, he had like left Chloe and then he got with Abigail and then he went to Castle Moore and then he got with Mary, brought back Mary. And then came Seconds back from Castle later. Moore. And then was like, he was, I think he was talking to like Jake and Tyler or something and he was like, you know, like just don't really know what to do. And I think they kind of thought that he Abigail. was going to go back to Abigail and then he was like, my head's just with chloe and they were like, like what, what? <laughs> they were like no mary barely has her foot in the in the yeah. door i actually love mary's, mary's stunning her. she got fucked over with that mermaid costume I can know, i say not a good look i love that she posted She's that really so hot pretty the hot mermaid one, one yeah. on halloween I and like, i remember oh. watching just some of the live uh kind of you know when they were recoupling it seemed like everyone really liked mary like that yeah, they got yeah, on really, really well lovely. yeah but yeah like i the funniest thing ever was like everything toby did to chloe and then he was like, I think I like you. She's like, yeah, cool. Let's get back together. <laughs> yeah. I was like, Chloe. But yeah. I think their thing was though that they just got on so well. And they like had loads of banter. And yeah. were like, they had a lot of fun. That and was, I think when he I suggested getting back, she was like, oh, okay. Because they definitely should have won. They had such a turn in their relationship. Remember that episode where she's like, what, where is your head at? And he's like, I don't know. And she's like, well, that's your answer. Like, I felt so yeah. sad for her. And then from to turn around, whereas with Liam... I kind of think Liam was a snake. Yeah. Like, yeah, he, he lied. He, he lied. lied. Remember Millie's and reaction? And he was caught on national television. Like, like, the producers bringing Lily in was iconic. Iconic. Who, who were you yeah. getting along with Lily? She's like, she was Liam. like, Liam. <gasps> now, I've seen loads of lo- previous advisors talking about this, that, like, that fire pit scene can sometimes last from, like, midnight till yeah. four in the morning. And they're all literally, like... They're exhausted. Like they're asleep. like, right, retake. <laughs> Like imagine being so tired, you got your man back. They're like, oh, we've one more scene to shoot. And then all these girls come in and you're yeah. like, sorry. Mm. And what I liked with that compared to the Chloe and Toby one, and maybe this is why they went, is Millie did not let him back easy. No. And the thing is, you're on a show like that. Liam easy could have been like, well, some other girls are going to come in here tomorrow. He was very much like, I am getting her back. Yeah. And like they live together now, they're still together. But like, remember when they I went. I don't think they're going to last. Do you not? No. I, I don't, know, I, don't I wouldn't trust him. Yeah. Remember when they all went to cast them where Chloe said like an iconic quote that I'll never forget. Well, I can't remember the exact words of word forgotten. But she said Paraphrase. she said something like when they're going to cast them more, it's just like she was like, It's like when you go on a lad's holiday yeah. and they're like night babe, but then on their friend's story you see them tagged and they're like out with hands yeah. around. I was like, It is yeah. like that. And you're like, whose shoulder is in that? She said I thought it was like getting the postcard. The yeah. postcard. Now, that is one thing I will say. So was a bit mean because yeah. they made it look like Teddy had cheated. Yeah, like that was that was that a, was fucked up. That was like, beyond. That was intense. Yeah. Like, and then everyone's giving it to her for going mad. But I'm like, I would go mad though if yeah. I saw that. What are you meant Especially to think? Especially given Faye's personality. Yeah. Like, and she that was she bad. had made it very clear that she's yeah. been hurt so badly in the mm. past, and something like that would trigger her. Yeah. That was horrible. That was really didn't mean. like that. But I did really enjoy movie night because I was like, will they ever know that Jake was mm. egging them all on? He was like, do you get the thong in? Blah, blah, blah. Mm. And when it was like Jake's blah, 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 when they selected the movie, I was like, here we go. And that was like the end, the beginning yeah. of the end of him and Lib. Yeah. Because she was like, there's something about That was when she honest. realized that there was something amiss. But yeah. like, I loved that challenge. I know some people were kind of giving out about it. But like, they were going they, to see it when they came out anyway. Yeah, but like, I think it was totally fair because it was things that they actually said. It wasn't twisted. And it was things that they did. And where yeah. the difference with that in the likes of the tweet challenge, with mm. the, which they took away, the tweet challenge kind of misinterpreted things. You a bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, whereas the actual scenes that they showed in the movie challenge, they all said those things and they weren't... Maybe one or two of them were kind of taken out of context, but... but not that much. Now, not in fairness, that much. Faye did massively over- over- overreact because in her scene, she was like basically hugging your man and all over him. Mm. All Teddy said was like, there was a bit of sexual chemistry and yeah. then the fucking roof she lifted off like, the girl. Ah! Ah! And she was like, don't talk to me. And she was like, just yeah. walk on, walk on. I was like, oh my God. So, you know, it, wa- it wasn't the best scene, but... I still like I liked her full circle story then she came back again it's definitely the care team though because she was just like I have problems with this and my past and that but what a season what a season can't wait for next year but I'm saying this now I want an Irish OG please in there man or woman yeah we've had we've had a few tips for women that are possibly going in so it'd be interesting to see that um let's try and end well we have actually a little bit of time still right 
Okay, we have like 10, 15 minutes. So we'll mention, I think we have to mention Little Mix because yes. they split. Yeah. And not only did they split, and that was a shocker, the drama between the three of them. Ooh. Like I definitely never saw that coming. I saw the split coming. I saw Jessie leaving, but Jessie was sour as fuck. Like she didn't want to let it go easily. This is a story that actually like, upset me because I'm a Little Mix fan I've mm-hmm. gone I've seen them in concert followed them from the days of X Factor thought You've they were so many cool. people in concert that I haven't I know I'm always going to concert you're like them um, but like you know I think they did such a good job of like they were kind of like a modern version of the Spice Girls yeah like which is a big thing and they were say. the first female group to ever win the best yeah. group award for like, the Brits yeah and like they all just seemed like such good friends. Mm-hmm. And then obviously Jesse oh, announced the live. Uh, Jesse announced that she was leaving the group at the very end of 2020. That mm-hmm. was like really sad. And then there was kind of rumors that she and like when she announced that she was leaving the band, she said it was because it was really affecting her mental health. And she's had a very of, open battle about her weight. Yeah. And, and like she felt dealing that with like trolls. she and she always felt like she was larger than the yeah. other girls. Yeah. Yeah. And getting compared to them and stuff like that. And then there was kind of rumors that she was going to launch her own solo career. And anyway, so in September, she released her first single with Nicki Minaj. Which was a remake. Called Boys. Bad Boys. And um, oh, P. she, Diddy. you know, <laughs> Bad Boys. <laughs> Bad, Boys. <laughs> Bad Boys. I'm sorry. Yeah. I was just annoyed that it was like her debut single. That's, I know. Ooh, came out 20 years ago. But it's brand. I was like. Well, it's sampled. It, a lot of people do that. The chorus was yeah, sampled. But a sampled lot of people it. do do that, but. Anyway, so immediately she was very publicly accused of black fishing. And she was like, I was, I was on holiday. Do you remember? She was like, she yeah. was darker than Nicki Minaj. Yeah, it darker. was so bad. Where had she been? The auntie. Didn't and you? then um, this stuff kind of came out that she wasn't really speaking to the other members of Little Mix anymore. And then this is the big thing that happened. So this Instagram user called No Hun, he's kind of like a bit of an influencer. He posted this screenshot where basically he had said that he was going to make a video of him dancing to boys. Mm -hmm. And I think it was like the day the song was released or something. And Leanne Pinnock replied to it and and was like, make a video about her being a blackfish. Is that and how that happened? Yeah, I didn't know about this. So he posted. Sorry, a no one is an iconic username. Yeah, I know. I, I need to. I need to follow him. So he posted a screenshot of this, and he basically replied and was like, "Oh my god, I thought you guys were good." And she was like, "No, she's a horrible person." Um, basically said that she cut her and Perry. Now, and to be fair, before Jade th- that happened, she had done a few interviews where she kind of suggested. She was like, oh, we don't talk anymore. Still yeah, them, she definitely started the, well, we're not really, like mm. it could have been left yeah. all fair and love and war, but she definitely was like, well, no one was there for me. And yeah. it was hard. I was like, mm. yeah. So like that was a whole thing. And like Little Mix have kind of alluded to it basically being like, look, like, don't talk anymore, that kind of thing. And there's been reports that they apparently warned Jesse about blackfishing yeah. a long, long time but ago. But she's saying they never did. Yeah. And she's basically said, like, you know, she grew up loving black culture and, you know, mm-hmm. that kind of thing. She has tried to defend herself. But anyway, that all happened. And then there kind of started to be whispers that Little Mix were going to split up. And everyone was like, no. So were their pregnancies also in this year? Yeah. yeah, so basically... What a magic uh, thing Little Mix. Yeah, I think they both... So Perry, start, Perry and Leanne both gave birth in August, I think. Yeah. And Perry had um, a had little boy with twins. Alex uh, yeah. Oxlade-Chamberlain, who's a very famous footballer. Yeah. And then Jade had... Or not Jade. Leanne. Leanne had, had twins. twins. And no one even knew that Shook. she was expecting twins. Shook. Which is like Show those photos of Jade being like... Rolling her eyes at like the red carpets and they're both like with yeah their, they're like, both bumps. bumps. It was a shocker and I think they have such a fan base. It's really really sad. Mm. Could they not just not talk about it? Mm. Like One Direction, right? They've given out about like what happened on tour, like as in with their management, they felt trapped. You've never really seen them come out being like Harry was a dick. 
Yeah. Because they understand that like that would literally break the heart of millions of fans. Mm. So it is a bit sad to see they've made this all so public. And I think it's especially sad because a lot of uh, Little Mix's thing and it was that's why I'm comparing them, mm. them to the Spice Girls. They were all about girl power and like yeah. woman like me and you know like real And then actually Jessie's like fuck you all. Yeah, yeah, yeah I sad. know. It is sad. And now uh, Little Mix recently just announced that they're um, taking a break next year. We all know what hiatus means and it means they're breaking up forever. So I remember when sad. Boyzone and Westlife broke up you were under nappies that's saying no I always <laughs> this is say brought up everything <laughs> but there was a national helpline oh, like launched people were people fainting were in the streets people were devastated yeah. so I think it's literally for the mental health of their young fans that they never they're say saying, we're breaking up yeah. they're just like oh we're taking a little break but to be honest I genuinely do think that Little Mix will eventually get back together I do Maybe think that reunion. they love yeah I do think that they love well Jessie ain't coming theirs. back oh no Jessie's no she's there. gone so I remember when Jessie left and they did that performance and they like shoved her off the stage do you remember there was like a, a fourth person that was Fifth Harmony oh why do I think that was that Little was Mix. Fifth Harmony when that Camilla was Cabello dramatic. left sorry I'm getting yeah confused. that was imagine they did that that was so intense it was so good though listen they might do they that on their, t- on their final it. tour they like might they do that her. but even when they did their like we're taking a break and they were like showing footage from over the years Jessie not, wasn't not a, not a single not a side a second not like an of image Jessie. of her ankle even like, no. she just wasn't she's there she's just gone it was like we are three same again Brian McFadden left Westlife Jerry Halliwell left Spice Girls Zayn Malik left one direction there's always one there's always one and actually before, I remember I was actually devastated over Brian McFadden oh, were oh. you why now we're blocked now I'm like we're Brian blocked. McFadden has us blocked on blocked Twitter blocked on Twitter I'm not is, blocked but Goss is Goss blocked. is blocked he actually replied to us and went you're blocked you're blocked I and was then like, blocked us just so we could know I was like oh my god I'm so hurt just because of a head like you're like I'm <laughs> in love with you <laughs> I'm your biggest fan no. Brian 10 year old me was in love with them now have no you more. ever you should go see boys life you know just really, <laughs> yeah really not. I know I love Keith Duffy now I love Keith Duffy yeah. too <laughs> Brian we need, we need to make a so do you remember Brian's uh, when he did now I was devastated for Craig Katona but remember he had his own single life like as a single artist and then he did that, that he did the duet with Delta Goodrum oh all, yeah I almost there that. I was That's like it's so song. good and then it was like I'm actually seeing Delta Goodrum and we were yeah, like we were excuse like, me poor Carrie she just won I'm a celebrity she was the queen of the world like that was such a dramatic yeah. you're not to say no. <laughs> <laughs> no I remember <laughs> Carrie and I'm so so I want to talk before we go right I want to talk we, we did miss a few stories like when you were talking about Zayn Malik there I was thinking of the Gigi Hadid yeah the llama but there's too much to get there's into too, there's too also much. just as a little hot tip to mention Benifer, JLo and um, Ben that Affleck, was well, definitely one of my before. highs of 2021 yeah, is which them we getting back together before. Alec Baldwin and the Rust shooting obviously a really bad moment of this year Katie Pry, I, I, I can't I can't even, even get sum it up. in you know that much? you know that video of her and she's like my horse got killed in the jewel <laughs> carriageway my dog got run no, over no, like, I shouldn't be laughing no no <laughs> So. That feels like my last 48 hours. Like, it's been such a rough week. And she's like, almost got kidnapped in South Africa. Like, and she's this all the woman has done. had she's so had a rough many time. things happen to her. And it's, no, it's been it's rough. crazy. It's been a bad year for her. And it's been a bad year for, I mean. That, we would be here for 75 Alec years Baldwin. if we actually went into no, like, everything that's bu- happened I can't even year. mention the bullet so, points. So, we can't. It's too much. Um, and we were going to mention about a few celebrity splits. Luke T and Shanice from Love Island. Sad times. Sean Mendes and Camilla Cabello. That was sad. But was I'm I so shocked? convinced you know, that was for showmance. I know, me too. Like, but then remember those what? photos of them at lunch and she's like really upset. Yeah. It did make me think that was real. Um, Scott, Jessica and Amelia. I mean, Scott could be in every year splits. Yeah. Because he dates so many younger women. Right. Um, but yeah, so water. Oh my God, Joe, you know we need to do a special mention for it because I've just seen it in the notes about the lows. Sarah Harding dying. I know. That really, was really, really sad. Such a shock. And one of the things that came from it that was actually positive, which I know is weird to say, is she highlighted the need to like check your yeah. breasts. Mm-hmm. like get your and smear don't ignore it don't she, ignore it she, she admitted was wrong. that she initially did ignore it yeah and speaking of girl bands like I feel like in a weird way like her death brought girls laid back together because obviously mm. they don't yeah. all get on there's definitely a rift between Nadine and the girls that's just like yeah. well documented but before she died she released a book and she said in the book that like they all came together and they were with her so I was nice. just 
so sad and like there was tributes from all over the world and it was just like she was so young Mm. and it was at the beginning of covid and i think a lot of people maybe didn't go to the doctors when they felt something was wrong Mm. they felt like an inconvenience so for anyone watching it's another reminder get your smear check your breasts like they're the clinics are still open she was only 39 so young and the clinics are open like there is a bit of a delay but you can get your appointment like i just got my smear a couple of weeks ago you can do it so reminder but yeah so first i want your highs and lows from the stories and then i want your personal highs and lows oh god so you don't go into the lows too much of your personal (laughs) but i I thought you meant like story wise didn't know you meant story wise highs and lows maybe we'll just do highs for the personal but highs and lows of stories then what What's your what's your feel? Stories. So as I mentioned before, Kim and Kanye splitting up because I'm a long time fan You're of like, them, or of both of them, and them as a couple. So it's sad. It's but a double also whammy for you. A high for me is also Kim and Pete Davidson's romance because I just love yeah. the scandal of that. Mm-hmm. Um, another high for me. Oh my god, I wrote it down somewhere. Um, another high for me was the Friends Genius. reunion. I loved that. Yeah. Britney being freed, obviously. Yeah. Love that. And then and Benefer. Benefer. That was a good moment for you. Such a good moment. What about your own personal life? You got it. You got a new apartment. Did get a new that apartment. That was a high. Yeah, that was a high. Uh, went on holiday. Also to Paris. I'll just remind you. Yes, again. Paris. <laughs> Paris is so You're good. like, Ibiza never went anywhere else. For fuck's <laughs> yeah. sake. No, that was amazing. Also, another one of my highs was doing the Love Island live stream. That was In terms of so work, I good. loved doing yeah, that. It was so, and the gossies. Yeah. The gossies happened in the 2021. The fact that we pulled that off virtually no, it makes was no sense. How does so that happen? Good. I'm so. already exhausted and we're starting the next gossies already. How is it happening? <sighs> like I'm asleep. <laughs> so highs and lows for me. Well, definitely there, as in celebrity stories, the lows, I know you have it down yourself as well, but like obviously the Alec Baldwin rust. Crazy. Like, just even from an industry perspective, it's everyone's worst nightmare. Yeah, just yeah. anyone that works in film. I thought that was so sad. Definitely Sarah, Sarah Harding like really like yeah. took me back. I was just so shocked. You know, when a celebrity dies, it was just like they're not meant to die. Mm. I just, it was the same with Willie. What's the second? Willie Garson. Willie Garson, who played Stanford in Sex and They were City. both such vivacious yeah, people. Yeah, like yeah. people you feel like you knew. And so their deaths just really, yeah. really, really oh, shocked me. So sad. Um, and then in terms of highs, definitely the Friends Union was up there for me. Yeah, loved it. I know this is technically happening. Yeah, this is happening this year. The Harry Potter reunion. Yeah. Well, it's so coming out excited. New Year's Day. Yeah, so by the time this is out, it, it will yeah. have been out. Um. Well, nerdy out. Yeah. Very excited about that because I'm a huge, huge, huge Harry yeah. Potter fan. Definitely De- rewatching all Definitely this. Definitely rewatching it. I just really enjoyed Love Island as well. I know we had a lot of work around it, so it was a bit stressful, but I did really enjoy it. It just felt like normality was starting to come back because mm-hmm. Love Island was back. Because remember, yeah. Love Island was cancelled yeah, in 2020. Um, and then, personal wise, I, I mean, the fact that we started the year doing an online version of the Gossies when none of our competitors even kept their awards open. I mean, that was a huge achievement. And I mean, we basically ran a full production with no experience. <laughs> yeah. Like, obviously I directed... You had a clue what we were doing. <laughs> I directed a film or two, so I kind of had an understanding of some of the basics. But like, the things we pulled off, people oh wouldn't God. be able to do And it. like, people don't even know the, like, the things the that happened within seconds before we seconds. even went live. Like, you know. Like, I remember know. Lucy Kennedy, our fave. Love hosting her. the show and we were on the Zoom going to all the celebrities and like how do you think Lucy knew who was coming up I was like riding on a sheet being like Nikki Byrne <laughs> like it was just the wildest thing so wild but isn't it the most fun feeling being on set oh my god the adrenaline it's rush so you good. get is and like I miss amazing. that from like acting so it's nice to be able to bring that into Goss now to start doing that like with the Camille event yeah. the Love Island event Loved that. that was similar we have a few more broadcasts coming up actually next year which I'm excited about yeah. Um, obviously the Department of Justice campaign yeah is there that's going to be the highlight of my life let alone <laughs> your life of 2021 but um, being able to bring in the legislation um, for intimate image abuse that was mental the most draining draining weeks of my life but like so happy I did that and really really proud of that yeah um, still being in college still <laughs> hanging in there somehow still doing my life. I don't know how don't you know how. live and one of my best moments of this year is definitely moving into my house. Yeah. It's like my little safe haven. Oh my God. Was that this that year? That was 2021. Yeah. I moved in just before the I summer. I feel like I you've was been like there eight, longer. Uh, no, March, April, May. I moved in in May. That is so yeah. wild. And that was just one of my best 
like moments as well of my life I like dreamed up that house mm. and I remember when I went to see when I went for the viewing I was like it looked like a house that I had stayed in an Airbnb in LA and I was like how does this house yeah. exist isn't it a very no LA? one be looking up the address don't be looking Look it up off. Now. <laughs> but it's very LA isn't it the way the yeah. really high ceilings it's all white that was good and also I just think this year because I was like so alone in 2020 just being able to see people again yeah <laughs> like that was like not happening for yeah. me so seeing my family and um, my sister gave birth only like a couple of weeks ago so we have a new baby oh. in the family so that's amazing so yeah there's actually been loads of good yeah I mean me and you have our bad days this Ooh, week alone has been like you should this. hear some of me and Ali's voice notes like because like obviously we work together but like we're obviously besties Best as well and yeah. we send each other voice notes all the time Being and like, like some of them everything. like you would play it and it would be like ah! like just scream <laughs> screaming and I don't even send you that long voice notes my voice notes to you were like three to six minutes because long. you know I'm like oh god but I send voice notes to people that genuinely genuinely last 36 minutes no that's not just call them like like I don't answer the phone <laughs> I saw a mem the other day and it's like when you're looking at your phone waiting for this it to stop ringing so you can text them back and I'm oh like oh my what? god why are you ringing no, me no it's because there's so many freaking not scam okay. calls at the well, moment I never the co- answer my during phone. the start of COVID it was like hi this is a social protection. It's yeah. like, what? It's like, Give okay. me your bank details. <laughs> yeah. They probably did catch me people out. God love them. No, like some people are gullible. And then my last so question, because we do have to wrap it up now. What are you looking forward to the most in 2022? Showbiz wise, personal wise, whatever. Um, Showbiz wise, I'm going to make a prediction that Travis Barker and Kourtney Kardashian are going to have a baby. <gasps> Using her frozen eggs? Yeah. Okay. I think they're definitely going to do that. Oh what else? I, I would like to see good things for Britney Spears. I think I she'll know, like too. get married. married. Will she have a baby? I don't know. But she'll, she'll tie the knot. Yeah, she'll tie the knot. Personal wise, I don't know. I really hope that we can get to do the Gossies in person. And, I know. you know, ha- bring all Me that too. back. Yeah. Uh, because obviously that's it's the like plan. A, that's the plan. March. It's a huge part of our year. And obviously yeah. it's like. I'm excited for it. It's our big achievement of the yeah. year. Really. And this, I do think this is going to be the biggest year we've ever had. Yeah. The amount of people that have said to me, like literally, my last night out was in 2020. At the Gossies. Yeah. I'm just thinking of Dahi. Okay? You're, I was just going to say exactly. that's Dahi. But everyone says that to me. Yeah. And the amount of people that like didn't make it in 2020, because we literally had one of the last events before lockdown. Yeah. The amount of people that didn't make it, they're like, oh, I'm fucking flying in. Yeah. I'll come yeah. from China. <laughs> Jet like, in. Like. So I think we're going to have a really good crew, a few Love Island stars this yeah. year. What about other any other personal stuff? <sighs> I don't know. So you can go go on like go on more holidays. No, like, like I said at the start of the podcast, I'm kind of afraid to like make any, make any like hopes or plans because no, who fucking you gotta knows hope. You got you gotta hope. I'm trying to think story wise what I'm predicting for next year. Da, 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 da. I think Kim and Pete might actually last. No, and shock everyone. No, no, no shock everyone I think that could happen what else am I thinking I actually don't know I mean this is the thing I'm actually so bad I genuinely do so many stories I've never even read sometimes my sister messages me being like oh my god blah 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 died or and I'm like what where did you see that and she's like on god <laughs> where do you <laughs> it's think so bad I'm just like doing other things all the fucking time I'm trying to think no sorry what I'm really looking forward to is the new Kardashian Hulu series yeah I can't I'm wait. very excited for that yeah. I literally am on my hands and knees waiting for succession mm. season We're four. We're going to wait a long time. Like, yeah. not happy about the wait, but I will. I will <gasps> wait. Actually, speaking of TV shows, you know what I'm excited about? Drive to Survive season four. I haven't watched you the first season. You need to start watching this show. It's so, so good. Go. Like, if anyone wants to get into something that's like a good like, hobby. Yeah. F1. Drive a car. Oh, my God. <laughs> So no, I will. I will watch that. So good. Um, is there any other shows coming back next year? I'm trying to think. They're kind of they're kind of the main ones. Personal wise, get through college. <laughs> I need to do my final I don't know year. How you're doing that. 2022 will mark the beginning of my final semester. Like literally, almost every week, I'm always like, would you not just like stop? <laughs> I'm like no, I know. Like, this no, year, I like, have to do it's it. It's so hard this year. And literally the other day in our group, the Griffiths College group WhatsApp, people were like, "I'm deferring the year." And yeah, everyone's like deferring, and I'm like, "No, you know I'm headstrong as fuck." I'm I like, know. "I'll finish this." You'll be on your deathbed, and you'll still be like, "I still be I'll typing do and doing something." <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, I actually will bring in my laptop. They were like, "What? What's a laptop?" It'd probably be an old thing by then. And yeah. um, but I definitely finishing the degree, and then I have other legislation I want to bring in. Mm. You know, that's that's on it's on my mind um and then yeah I suppose just spending more time with family going to the Oscars yeah 
we, we're hoping we're hoping we're to go after to the gossies i'm not worried about the gossies the gossies will happen yeah and um, i will go ahead so i'm very excited about that and then i'm really really excited about going to la like when i just land on the tarmac in lax i'll feel like a new person like yeah. i can't wait. and our last trip back to um to was la together so was fun. the funnest we need to just ever. go straight from the plane to malibu beach in yes yeah with our cases like yeah and have a few drinks <laughs> and be there for 12 hours for 12 hours again yeah <laughs> But yeah, that's that's it from us guys for the year. They were all the biggest Woo. stories. Obviously, for any of these stories and everything breaking since goth.ie is our website and our Instagram stories will have absolutely everything. A huge thank you again to Greenheart CBD, our sponsors of this season. Make sure to go on to greenheartcbd.ie to shop their products and we'll do one final cheers to the year. Woo, Happy New Year, everyone. Woo.